Night and morning, I drink warnings, warnings and vocar. <laughs> Stimulating late night sporting debate for long distance lorry drivers. Sporting for the copy. Young mums. What time do you call this coming on? And students who've taken too many of those caffeine tablets. <laughs> the two mics, Harry and Graham on Talk Sport. Look at the light! Now, the thing is, because I'm smart than the average bear, yeah. I've been driving around the countryside looking at farms. Yeah. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics, and on this night of mega European triumph for Merseyside, it's time to say a very, very warm welcome to a presumer very, very pleased, Mike Porky Parry. Very good morning to you, Mr. Parry. A very good morning to you, Mike. I want to say congratulations to Liverpool. I thought that uh, what happened tonight at Anfield was outstanding. Wasn't it, Joe? To come from two goals down at home. Uh, was it 2 0 at half time they were down? Uh, I, I think, think it they was. Were. Yeah. I think they were. Certainly, uh, well, they were th- certainly 3 1 down. Yeah, well, they were 2 0 down, and uh, that was 44 minutes when I. Uh, when I glanced at my um, screen at... Uh, you glanced at it? Yeah, well, yeah. Were you, not, were you not sort of glued to it? No, that, well, I thought that by that stage, I thought the game was over, Liverpool were going out. Yeah. So at that stage, I, I turned my attentions to important matters to do with our well, show tonight. Well, 2-0 down after 10 minutes. Yeah, well, I know. But but when it got to half-time, there was still 2-0 down. Mm. So I thought, well, there's no comeback um, in the offing here. Liverpool yeah. are beaten. You know, they've been battered to the ground on their home turf. It's uh, Jurgen Klopp's old club bashing up his new club. They're not going to get out of this one. Yeah. And then they did. So a huge congratulations to Liverpool. And for Liverpool fans, it must have been such a thrilling experience and such a great place to be tonight. You know, I remember actually going back a lot of years when Everton played... Um... No, we're not going to talk about Everton tonight. This is Liverpool's night. Okay? Yeah, yeah, we're no, not no. talking about Everton. No, what People I'm... have already been complaining. No, every Mike, single night you mention Everton. Mike, just shut up every for a minute. Every single night you talk about Everton. Mike, you don't go to live this football This is Liverpool's matches. night. You don't go to live football matches. This is matches. Liverpool's night. So what I'm trying to explain is the atmosphere. I understand the atmosphere. A great European night from Me my too. experience of Goodison Park. So you do don't because you've never experienced well, it. Well, it's ancient history. It was still in black so and white. what I'm saying is... I saw Liverpool in the UEFA Cup playing Borussia Mönchengladbach. Back oh, did you? In 1972. Is that one of half a dozen games you've been to in your life? Uh, I've been to many games in my life. Why are you having to suddenly attacking me just because Liverpool have done well in Europe in a competition that you've previously derided, but which has proven to be one of the most entertaining games of all time? I, I said that in the opening to the show. No, you didn't. I did. I think you've been very begrudging about Liverpool. No, I'm not being begrudging. I I've just said I think it was a marvellous night for them, and now you're twisting my words. Why well, you started to talk about Everton? Something very wrong with you when it gets to talk about live football. You're embarrassed that you haven't seen I'm much not at all of it. Embarrassed. But anyway, look. I've seen plenty of live football. I think Unfortunately, it, some of it's been with you, and it's been Everton. Three nil-nil draws. I think it was a brilliant night for the Liverpool fans. I understand exactly the emotions of that comeback tonight in that second half. It would have been brilliant. And uh, I hope they go on now, and I hope they lift that European trophy. I'll always back an English team in European competition against anybody else. And won't it be fantastic if, by doing that, they get themselves into the Champions League? Well, if Liverpool achieve success, I wish them only the best. I have no envy whatsoever for I any other club. That. I don't care I what other that. clubs do because the the price of being an Evertonian is that you are there for life. You're not, you don't choose it. You're a chosen one, and you go with the good times and the bad times. So I don't want to be a fan of any other club, but I have no resentment, no envy, sure, and no I'll malice tell you what. towards anybody else. I came into else. this studio feeling really on a high with with, with having, yeah. having seen this fantastic performance, a yeah. fantastic game, and you've managed to completely make me feel now completely deflated. Really, I'm not sure why that yeah. is. It's because you've well, been reminded because, you don't go to no, live football matches. I, I, but anyway, I, I, there we I go. go to as many live football matches I can go to with yes. the commitments that I have in of various course. other areas. Of you course, know. you have huge this commitments. Is, this is not about Roger me. Rising, this is not about me. This is not about me. £75 bottles of champagne. I understand let all me that. Read you, let me read you some of the uh, headlines in the papers. New Fab Four, yeah. uh, which is interesting because that's obviously a Merseyside reference. Yes, of course. Uh, Clop that. Cop mm. Heroes win thriller. Unbelievable in yeah. the Daily Telegraph. Yeah. Liverpool stir memories with a famous European comeback. Well, we know One paper is actually calling it Istanbul 2. Istanbul well, no, I'm just two, telling you yeah. how it's Exciting! This game was. Well, it is very exciting. Before you I've managed told you. to pour the, you know, the cold water all over. I haven't poured any the cold water over. The miracle of Anfield. Have you gone mad? On the back of the Independent miracle. On the back of the uh, mirror. When did I pour cold? When did I pour cold water well, on Liverpool's because, achievement well, tonight? Because, because you are not. You're clearly not excited about it. You're clearly kind of, you know. I, I said I think it's it, a brilliant talking, thing for Liverpool. Talking, you're talking it down. All you need I'm is love. I'm not talking it down. And even you're here, a look, complete idiot. You know that. Last you Dortmund, don't even listen. Last Dortmund Weiner. What a stupid thing you to have said. I poured cold water on it. I've just you up, have. I've just big Liverpool up and said I think it's a magnificent yeah, you don't achievement. You don't sound excited at all. What do you want me to do? Jump up and down on the desk? Well, you normally start shouting whenever there's no, a great no, football no, no. match. Liverpool to talk are not about. my team, but I understand exactly how Liverpool right. fans feel. And good luck to them. Okay. I'm very pleased with them. It's not a problem at all. all right. The um, the other issue is with a colleague of ours, old Jason Cundy, very mealy mouth.
wild about it, I thought. You know what I mean? Well, he's a Chelsea make... fan, isn't he? Well, you see, I don't understand this. You'd have thought, being a Chelsea fan, with all the success they've had over the last two decades, yeah. or certainly last one and a half decades, well, it started in 2004, didn't it? So that's like 12 years. With all the success they've had the last 12 years, Jose Mourinho and all that, you know, won the European Cup and all that kind of sort of Champions League. Yeah, but there, yeah. Is, a, there is a sort of certain enmity between Jason and, and, and Liverpool yeah, but fans when, over the years. But when you let that enmity rise to the top, you realise that another club's getting under your skin. And considering Chelsea have been so much better than Liverpool over those last 12... Uh, well, not this year, though. Yes, not, no, not this year, I agree. You'd have thought that, uh, you know, Chelsea fans, of which Jason says he is one, uh, I'm, I'm not doubting that, makes it clear he's, he's been one since he was a kid, would just shrug their shoulders and say, all right, it's your night tonight, our night will come again. Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know why fans of clubs that are, are failing ever have to try and tear down the clubs that are succeeding. You've got to have a winner's attitude in everything you do in this life, in my view. Yes. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's the interesting thing about the way that football has, 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 has unfurled over the course yeah. of this season. Manchester City are still in the Champions League, which many people would have said no, yes. uh, is never going to be the case, as they're not the best team in the, Manchester in the Premier City. League. Yeah. Uh, we've got, of course, now Liverpool with a chance of getting into the Champions Indeed. League. What happens if Liverpool get into the Champions League via the Europa League? Does that mean that there's one less team coming from the Premier League? I don't think it does. I, th- I think the situation in which Spurs got knocked out of the Champions League because yeah. Chelsea won yes. the Champions League... So the fourth-place team didn't get in. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that applies to the other competition. I, it... I, I, I think the, the to make the Europa League a proper competition, mm. the prize for the winner was you go into the Champions League. Yeah. But I don't think that that's at the expense of another club from your country. So you could get five yeah, English indeed. teams I'm, in the Champions I, League well, if I, Liverpool were to win. It. I'll stand to be corrected, but yeah. I'm pretty sure that's that is my, the case. That is my understanding. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the case. Shall I read you a few tweets that have come in early doors? Yeah, good idea. Uh, here's one for uh, uh, from Steve, uh, who says this. It was a remarkable comeback by Liverpool last night. Was it better than Istanbul? Well, I think you'd have to say no, because no, they didn't actually... No, 3-0 down. Uh, but also, they won the Champions League as a yeah, result. Yeah, they won the trophy this on was, the night. This was a yeah. quarter-final. But he then says, a few minutes in, and the blue half of Merseyside gets mentioned by Porky. Well, no, all I said was, it was one thing I said is, I've been at a European night at Goodison of similar proportions when we played the Germans again uh-huh. and um, and uh, I have to say that I understand exactly the, the what what will be coursing through the veins of those yeah. Liverpool fans tonight. And good luck, enjoy it. It's a great moment. Paul says this, it must be killing Porky to pretend he's happy for Liverpool. You can tell by his voice he's dying inside. No, not, <laughs> what, what, what do you want me to say? Do you want me to say, well, oh, I don't uh, know. Yeah, there's nothing much to it, really. Anybody could I have think, done it. I no. don't think you sound very enthusiastic. Well, I'm sorry, but, I mean, you know, there's enthusiastic and enthusiastic. If it was my team, of course, I'd sound more um, fired up by it. Yes. But I am not in any way denigrating Liverpool's achievement. I think it's a magnificent thing to have done. I think it's very Magnanimous of you to have done that. Thank you. Very well done indeed. Now, yeah. have you had a good day? Uh, yeah, good day. Yeah, I've had a good day. Have yeah, you? I've had a good day. I have had a good day, yeah. yeah. Why do you keep repeating it, man? Like, like, like you're trying to convince yourself. Do you know why I've had a good day? Why? Because nothing bad has happened today. Well, nothing good. good has happened, but nothing, nothing good has happened. happened. No. Really? Mo- most days, something bad happens, OK? Yeah. That's life. You have to expect that. Something... Oh, I, no, I have had a bad day. I have had a bad day. <laughs> I just remember why I've had a bad day. You've just remembered. Yeah. Go on. I got this blinking letter this morning in a brown envelope looking oh, yeah. very official. I oh, opened right, it. Oh, man. No, 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 no. I can cope. I can man. cope with taxman problems. Oh, okay. I can cope with taxman problems. Right. What I can't cope with is petty officialdom. Yeah. Some bum sitting behind a camera, mm. right in the yeah. in the bother of Su- in the borough of Southwark, right. has taken a picture of my car, yeah. which for ninety seconds mm. was in a bus stop. Oh yeah. Right. Well, you in know, a bus lane. No, in a bus stop. Right. Because I nipped out into Sainsbury's overnight store yeah. to get a croissant, one, you, croissant, one croissant, one croissant, one French croissant costing seventy p. And how much has it ended up costing? One hundred and sixty pounds for a parking <laughs> fine. Some, you well, know, you shouldn't park there. Some hopeless, officious bum was sitting behind a camera, decided to take a picture of my car. Do you know why that bloke took a picture of my car? He thought, I know what, if I worked for ten years, I wouldn't be able to afford that oh, you car. you think it's envy, do you? Of course it is. I wouldn't be able to afford that car, so I'm going to take a picture of that car. You're really upset then, about this Liverpool and then, result, aren't and you? Then, and then we're going, to send, we're going to send that guy a, a, a demand for £160 because he stopped for three minutes to buy himself a 70 p- a, a pence croissant yeah. in Sainsbury's overnight store. Mm. Sainsbury's open overnight because they're a commercial ongoing organisation. Yeah, you're not supposed to park Outside, and they though. have to have uh, customers 24 yeah. hours a so you're day. You're supposed to walk around there. You're not supposed that's to park. What, that's what makes it's a borough work. Minutes, it's only five minutes away from here. That's what makes a borough work. Instead of which, this bum sitting behind the cameras decided we will drive commerce out of our borough by penalising people in a massive way if well, they stop outside Sainsbury's. Well, because it was raining. So? 
I would have got a cold, and I can't afford to have a cold because my voice is unaffected. Uh -huh. I would then not be able to deliver to the millions of people who listen to right. us on this show. That's why, OK? See, look how animated you are about this. I'm going to bring... That, I meant to bring it in to yeah. take a photograph of it and yeah. put it out on tweet to embarrass the bum but who has... But if you pay, if you pay within two weeks, it's to half the price, isn't it? I don't know. I haven't read the... All I saw was £160. Pounds, It'll be 80 thought, quid if you, if you pay it quickly. Uh, well, even 80 quid, you see, is a bottle of champagne in your terms. You paid £75. Pounds, that's it right. is. Why should I pay the equivalent of a bottle of champagne just because I parked my car on a deserted street. Mm. A deserted street. There was no <laughs> other traffic on that street. <laughs> Dear me. Poor old Porky. He's not having a good time. Cheer him up. Send him some uh, encouraging tweets to him through the night. This is Talk Sport. Because you had a bad day. You take him one down. You sing a sad song just to turn it around. You said you don't go. You tell me don't lie. You work at a smile and you go for a ride. You had Sport, we are the two mites. Sporky's having a bad day because not only uh, did he get a parking ticket, which has been put up to some ludicrous idea yeah. of 180 pounds. I mean, that's 160. Some jump. 160. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, it didn't used to be. It used to be 130. I thought it's suddenly gone up. No, it's by 160 quid. quid. Uh, and in addition to that, Liverpool have got themselves through to the semi-finals I'm, of I'm, the Europa I'm League. I'm happy for Liverpool. There's not a problem. Well, you keep saying that. No. Now, a couple yeah. of explanations here for yes. uh, what may happen uh, in the future. Right. Yes. If City win the Champions League, says Stephen, and finish fifth, yes. whoever finishes fourth loses their spot. Right. Uh, uh, Europa League winner does not affect the Premier League. Well, I think it's quite straightforward from what I can understand. Yes. If Manchester City win the Champions League and uh, Liverpool win the Europa League, yes. uh, then the fourth place uh, Champions League place disappears. Right. Right. Yeah. However, if Manchester City win the Champions League and Liverpool don't win the Europa League, yeah. um, then uh, the four places that are at the top of the league remain. That's right. And Manchester City would take one yeah. of them. But if they were outside of the top four, yes. then there would be five. Yes. Right. Similarly, if Liverpool win on their own, uh, there will be five going through. Right. Yeah. Why are you do, why are you boring us all stiff with this well, detail? Because people have asked the question, and people want to know. Well, these things are important. You don't know the answers, so I'm trying to get no, it to I you. No, I do know the answers. I know the answers. I know the answers. Well, no, you didn't explain it. I did. No, you didn't. I did. I explained it perfectly. You did not say that if City and Liverpool both win. Nobody asked me if City and Liverpool were both well, going to win. You didn't explain that particular permutation. Well, if you want to know what happens there, yeah, I can what tell you. Then? You could end up with five teams in the Champions League from England because the fourth team from the Premier League will have to drop out, but two more English teams will go in as winners of the two competitions. That's that's very true. Yes. Only if Manchester City are outside of the top exactly, four, though, in exactly. which case it would only be four, wouldn't exactly. it? Exactly, of course it would, yeah. Yeah. So it's complicated, yeah. and that's why no, we like not, to not explain these things. Only I a maximum, these frankly, things. says only a maximum of five teams can mm. qualify for the Champions League. Yeah. Talking of, uh, actually, you know, how we moan and groan about the way that tickets are handed out, and, yeah. and I do have sympathy for you with that, but I hope you'll look at it closely, because you'll probably find that you yeah. can pay half the fee if you pay it within two weeks. Yes, yesterday, I once again tried to negotiate what is now known as mm. the uh, Elephant and Castle gyratory system, right? Oh, so I told unbelievable. you they changed it. Unbelievable. Here's what happens, right? As yeah. you're driving from the north yes. to go uh, to, to the east, yes. there is only one lane that you're allowed to go into. However, you can't get into the lane, right, yeah. until yeah. about one car before the traffic lights. You know why? Because yeah. before that is a bus lane, yeah. right? Now, when you, so when you sit behind traffic, um, you're in the wrong lane to go where you want to go. Unbelievable. And this is how I got lost the first time. Yeah. Because if you can't get into the left-hand lane, yes. i.e. if there's a bus there, yes. then the traffic starts moving and you can't move. I then noticed today yes. that the one lane that they have designated for that yes. particular uh, direction right. down the old Kent Road, mm. half of it is taken up with a bike uh, lane. So yeah. I, there's not you're not actually if you're technically sitting in that lane, yeah. you are breaking about three traffic rules. That's, that's so you can disgrace. have a photograph taken of you. Yeah. You're either in a bus lane or you're half in a cycle lane. Yeah. And if you want to go in that direction, basically yeah. you're you're liable to a fine. Incidentally, um, when we were outside the building before coming in, this uh, chap turned up with a bike, didn't he? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's it a rather mysterious. strange, rather strange tale. Very mysterious. Yeah. We were standing outside talking to one of our colleagues, yes. uh, who was uh, uh, arrived after a, a, a sort of a, an evening out. Yes. Um, and this guy suddenly turns up with a with a, the bike. a very nice looking bike. No, the bike didn't look damaged. Or the bike anything. didn't look damaged. So, at all. so he said, "Oh, hello." He said, "Is this number 18? Because yeah. that's the number of the uh, Talksport Towers. It is indeed. We said, "Yes." He said, "Oh, I want to bring this bike in." We said, "Why?" Shouldn't really give the number away, of course. Well, everybody knows where well, it is. Well, everybody doesn't know. Well, the address is well, on now all they the. Do. 
The address is on the headed note paper. Now they do. The address is on the website. Well, not every, the address is not in the phone book. Not everybody's looking for the address. What though? is wrong with you tonight? There's nothing wrong you with you. You want to jump on every single not word I say to try and That's prove that true. you have a superior intellect. That's well, not you don't. True. Nothing You're to a do thick with head that. and a juice head <laughs> and a four eyed bum. There's now then, let me you just wear, tell you. You're wearing glasses so this, yourself, I think. So this chap, yeah, but my glasses are not distinctively glasses. Yours are. Your face is not distinctively facial either. It certainly is. But you know. I think you wear your Joe 90 glasses to make sure that people look at your glasses, not your face. Nobody not, knows not, who Joe 90 is. that bloomed like caricature bloomed. that is your face. <laughs> right, now it then. It take you long to now recover then. from your heart operation, now, did it? Now that, now, look at this. You don't, know, don't, suddenly you start, to, don't you suddenly, start using my heart as suddenly, an excuse. Suddenly you're back to your, uh, you know, insulting best. So this chap turns up, quite a nice chap, with a bike. And, it, and it's, <laughs> as you say, quite a nice bike. He says, this has got to come in here. Why? Yeah. He said, well, the person riding this bike yeah. was called James. James, yeah. Oh, oh James, OK, how's James? Not so good, why? Yeah. Well, he's just been knocked off his bike yeah. by a taxi and he's broken his arm. That's right. Oh, and... and well, no, it kind of unfurled. You, well, well, it kind of unfurled because we the said, bike back well, here. is he all right? Yeah. Oh, no, he's broken his arm. Yeah, broken his arm. Which is quite a serious injury. Well, it is, yeah. And so he said, we called an ambulance and yeah. it's on its way. Right. OK, why have you brought the bike back here? Yeah. He said, well, he think he works... James think... said, can we bring the bike back to his office? Yeah, we think he works here. Anyway, we've asked around the building. Mm. We cannot find anybody called James missing. No. In action. No, hopefully there isn't anyone from here well, or, or indeed anywhere called James. Well, but, I mean, exactly. You and, always and worry about these things. You always worry it's some got, kind of a I've, scam, don't you? I've got, I've got sympathy for anybody who's called James mm. and has been knocked down by a taxi and has broken yeah. his arm tonight. But I can't understand whether this was a Trojan horse yeah. type job. You know what I mean? Right. This guy wanted to get Trojan to I mean, bike. we don't let bikes through the front door. No, they have to go around the back. We have a back, uh, like, uh, bike entrance. storage place for bikes yeah. and all that kind of stuff. So we were actually. Bike storage. We were actually, we, yeah, we, we were actually bending the rules to allow this chap in. But, I'm but also, not... you always yeah. worry, because, yeah. you know, that's how people gain access to various places. So I've, had, I've had a couple of strange tales happen to me lately right. of, of, of just kind of people that you just think there's something not quite right with Yes, you. exactly. Um, I was, a couple of couple of uh, days ago, yeah. I was just coming back, I was got off the bus, I was walking around yeah. to, back to my uh, my house, and it's kind of a little private road. Oh, yes. There was a few people walking, there was this one particular guy mm. walking, mm. Um, and he sort of started walking alongside me. And then he said to me, excuse oh, me. I don't like that. He said, yeah. can you tell me which way is north? Right? And I said, well, Very you see the river. strange question. Yeah, I said, you see the river? Yes. I said, that's the river there. I yes. said, across the other side of the river, that's yes. north. I yes. said, you want to go north, you have to cross the river. And he went, right. He said, uh, I'm actually, I'm trying to get to Devizes. Have you ever heard of it? No, you're joking. Yeah. And I said, well, actually, I used to live very near Devizes. Yeah. Uh, at which point he looked at... Was he going to walk there, by the Well, way? he claimed that he was going to walk to Devizes. Oh, rubbish. And, uh, this man's clearly a nut. He, he, uh, he said, I've been in hospital. I said, really? Oh, yeah, what sort of hospital? Uh, yeah, well, I didn't ask him that. Yeah. And he said, uh, um, uh, he said, I'm just trying to find out the best way to walk back to, to Devizes. And I said, well, you yeah. don't want to go north, do you? Why yeah. would you want to go north if you yeah. were to Devizes? You've got to go west. Exactly. I said, what I would do if go I was west, you, young man. is just keep walking along the river. Yeah. And I think because he realised that I knew where Devizes was, he, 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 he didn't actually ask me for any money. Yeah, I see. But I was very wary because I don't yeah. Turned into my little square yes. uh, to get into the house, and I thought I'll yeah. just keep an eye look square. over my shoulder. That's what your what? face looks like with my them glasses on. Yeah, well, it's go either on. square or round. It yeah, can't go be on. both. Go on. Um, and I just mm. sort of made sure that he kept walking and he didn't try and come in the door behind me. Yeah, because he didn't look particularly like a yeah, down and out. These people you've got to watch. Right. You've got to be very, very careful these days. Another, another one uh, up in yes. Manchester. A guy came up to me in Manchester when we were doing uh, our show. Yeah, but yeah, late on at night, and, yeah. and was carrying a bottle of beer. Yes, and he said, "I've just had my bag stolen." Right, and I went, "Oh, really? Where from?" And he mm. went, "Oh, the Manchester, uh, the MEN Arena." Yes, he said, "And my wallet was in and everything." And I said, oh, that's unfortunate, isn't it? That's mm. terrible. That's the bad news, that. And he went, yeah. Whereabouts uh, was this? This was sort of between the hotel and the dance Oh, I see, yeah. right, OK. Yeah. And he was like, uh, yeah, well, you know, um, I've got no money now. I haven't mm. got any money to get home. He said, uh, you, couldn't, um, you couldn't loan me some money. And I said, well, you managed to get yourself a beer. Yeah. He said, oh, yeah, I managed to get a beer at, at a bar just around the yeah, corner. Yeah, yes. Even though I haven't got any money. Yeah, Nick one. And I went, right, OK. I said, no, actually, I'm sorry, I've, I've, I'm fresh out of money. Mm. I haven't got any yeah. money on me. Do you know what? Yeah, people uh, are always trying this stuff, aren't oh, they? Oh, these con men, they're all over the place. When mm. I used to live in Washington, D.C., right, yeah. on the same streets as the President of the United States of America, America, right? Pennsylvania Avenue. Pennsylvania Avenue. Yeah. The president lives at 1600. That's like saying you live in the same city as the Queen. No, it's not. No, no, no. How they... far from, from the White House were you? About a mile. Mm. I was at 617, yeah. just at the junction of K Street, right? Yeah. And uh, every night I used to look out of my uh, window as I was preparing to go out for dinner, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, dressing, in my dressing room. And I looked down and I saw this guy walking around, not joking, carrying a red um, petrol can. A red know, petrol can, oh, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. A, like a sort of a, um, emergency petrol yeah, yeah. area. So, anyway, 
So one night I thought, I wonder what that guy's up to, you know. Okay. So I went down deliberately early, mm. thinking this guy'll arrive any minute now, and he did. And uh, so I, I put myself up there, and uh, he said, "Ah, oh, he said, uh, excuse me, he said, uh, can you tell me is there, is there a gas station anywhere around here, please?" Was he from Texas? Uh, he was a weird sounding yeah. American. <laughs> is, is, there, is there a gas station around here anywhere, please? Right. And I said, a gas station? I said, not really. I said, because, you know, this is like downtown Although, DC. Although, I mean, Washington DC is a hard place to find petrol stations in because oh, I've, I've that's struggled right. I know it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I said, it's downtown mm. DC, mate. I said, you've got much luck here, are you? He said, yeah. oh, gee. He said, uh, look, I, I, mister, I wonder if you can help me. He says, uh, I ran out of gas. Yeah. I left my wallet in my car. Yeah. I can't find a gas station. Could you possibly advance me ten dollars for yeah. a taxi to get to a gas station and get and get a gallon of gas? And well, if he left his wallet in his car, would he just go back and get it? Well, he said he'd walk too far from his car, two miles away. So oh, no, I, I said to him, two miles away. Yeah. So anyway, I just sort of said, I don't think I can help you, mate. I'm sorry. Anyway, the next night, yeah. with rat like cunning, I yeah. decided I was going to get this guy right? right. So what I did was, well, I convinced you that he wasn't telling the truth. Oh, I knew he wasn't. I knew he wasn't. I knew he was yeah. a bum, you know. Yeah. So the next night, I got my driver to come and pull the car up right outside the building. It's mm. one of those buildings where you can drive right up to the door. Oh, yeah. You know, it was a little sort of uh, uh, oval sort of driveway, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So I said, right, wait here until you see a bloke arrive around that corner holding a red... Uh, Who was the driver? My driver. Your driver? Yeah, my or driver. Or that a permanent driver? No, no, no. I'd call up the limo um, uh, oh, company limo and service, say, yeah. send me a... Or like Skyline or something. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. send me a limo, you know. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. So the guy comes around. No wonder newspapers ran no, out of money. No, no, no. You were yeah. driving around at DC in a limo every single time you went out for some fags. Well, if I really wanted to impress somebody and I was going out with a young lady, I'd get yeah. a stretch limo. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Shocking. A- anyway, so uh, so the guy turns around the corner. I said, right, this is it. So I got out of the car and I said, oh, hello, mate. I said, uh, I saw you last night. Mm. What? I said, you're out of petrol again? What? I said, here, Did he I still have the it. can? Yes, still have the can. <laughs> and I said, here, oh, look, here, I'll get in the car. And I put him in the car. I said, we're going to drive you back to your car. Right. So I kidnapped him, actually. Right. So I pushed him in the car. And mm. I said, OK, driver, let's go. So this guy said, uh, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, we're taking you back to your car. Right. Your car's run out of petrol again, hasn't it? Yeah. What? What? I said, come on, where is your car? Yeah. Come on. And then he thought I was mad, and he screamed at the driver, stop, stop, this guy's mad. This guy's kidnapped me. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And yeah, was there a yeah. smell of petrol coming from him? No, like he... there was no petrol in the can at all. It right. was a scam. It was a complete right. scam. Unbelievable. And, he, you know, about five or six people a night would give him $10. Yeah. Anyway, I put an end to it. The guy now, he never he never took to the streets of Washington, D.C. So again, So you saved ever. everybody once I certainly again. did, yeah. Porky the... Uh, I'm, like, uh, I'm like a vigilante me against uh, bums. You I'm know? like a vigilante yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Really and I'm going to get the guy who took the picture of my car. Warnock. When I was out getting my croissant, Warnock, okay? Warnock, man. Hey? I'm like a vigilante, me. Yeah. This is top yeah, sport. Yeah, yeah. up for No, no, I'm not standing up. No, no. <laughs> Guess what happened today? Because, you know, you said I've had a good day, bad yeah. day, you know. And, well, I think uh, we've established you've had a pretty bad oh, day. Oh, shocking day, yeah. you know. And, and, and I'm not a bitter person, I but, you know, that. when people send me a bill for under £60 for parking my car... Uh, to get a 70p croissant, I, fe- I feel this is victimisation in a huge way because yeah, I've got a nice on. car. I mean, as much as I feel sorry for you, yeah. uh, up to a point, you know you're not supposed to park in a bus stop. The, I didn't mean to park in a bus stop. Well, what happened was, do you know Ignorance what happened? is no excuse. There's all these delivery lorries at that yeah. time in the morning. Well, that's because they and, do deliveries at that and, time and in the morning. And Sainsbury's, Marks and & Spencer's and Tesco are all next to each other, and all three had lorries. Yeah. I, there was nowhere else for me to go if yeah. I wanted to be a customer of one of theirs. Well, you could have gone around the corner and so parked. I par- so I so I looked up. There were no buses. There were no passengers waiting in the bus st- yeah. uh, stop. Mm. There was no bus. Uh, you can't park in the bus stop. So I, it was three minutes. Three minutes. That's all it was. Right. It was an outrage. It's an outrage. Anyway, listen. Yeah. The other thing was a I book got a arrived. Tweets to read out to you in a minute as well. I want to hear those. Now, a, a, a book arrived, and mm. it's called A Very Expensive Poison, The Definitive Story of the Murder of Litvinenko oh, yeah. and Russia's War with the West. And it's brilliant, right? It's well, absolutely I you brilliant. you said it wasn't a murder. Uh, it was a, definitely a murder. Right. This book uh, concludes that. Because what they've done is they've taken a lot of transcripts from the inquest into Mr Litvinenko's death, uh, death and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But the, uh, the main conclusion is they name who the killers were, right? Mm. Uh, two guys, one called uh, Lugovoy yeah. and the other one Kovtun, right? Right. And they, they, they were both employed by the Kremlin, weren't they? Uh, they were actually employed, we think, by the FSB, oh, which yes. is the successor to the KGB. Exactly. And they, 
<laughs> they've detailed all their attempts to get Livinenko and concluded that... Um, it's included dragging pl- uh, Polonium uh, oh, all the way across oh, to, it's, it's to the Emirates Stadium, and right? Sp- and spilling it all over yeah. the, all over the Bond street. street. Yeah, yeah. And it says, Lugano and Covenant, it can only be said, are the Laurel and Hardy of the Intelligence Network. <laughs> they were hopeless at one stage. They they got the wrong guy. Right. It wasn't Livinenko. Right. They, well, they poisoned his tea anyway. No, they, they don't know. They right. don't know. They might have poisoned some guys. Uh, but isn't this the amazing tea? thing, that considering all of the stuff that yeah. they were spreading all around town, yeah. that nobody else did actually accidentally get poisoned? Yes, that's, that's right. It is, it is. It is absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. Because um, the suspects, Lugavoy and Covton, you know, uh, widely thought to be FSB operators, Mm. Um, had already left Britain by the time Mr Litvinenko was admitted to hospital and started turning orange. Uh, But the Metropolitan Police found polonium deposits at nearly every hotel and shop that the two had visited over the previous two days, Mm. 24 different locations. It's unbelievable. Well, this was when I was and saying, spilling it all over the yeah, place. Yeah, but I was saying that this is why this is yeah. why you know we should be concerned about this kind of attack because you had said yes. you know, in previous uh, incarnations of yours when you like to support the Russians, it, yeah. that, you know they're entitled to look after their national security in any way they wish, yeah. but not if they're going to be spreading poisonous polonium yeah. all over the West End of London. Surely. Yeah. Well, the thing Even is, you would think that was a bad idea. The thing is, the reason why it's all mired in you know sort of mystery and smoke and mirrors and clouds yeah. is because it says clearly that involved these two FSB agents described as Lowell and Hardy, but you can't rule out the fact that MI6 informers, international money launderers, atomic scientists, hospital doctors, academics and London police officers were all involved in some kind of conspiracy and cover-up. Mm. Because who knows what was going on? You so know, what, you're saying that they weren't telling us the truth? Who? All these people that you've just mentioned. Well, nobody knows. You see, what they say is, they say that... Um, now, uh, what they're saying is that a lot of evidence was given at the inquiry, right, which yeah. has not been made public. Mm. The problem with this is that no clues have been provided as to what we actually learned from anonymous witnesses. Right. So we are left guessing whether the secrecy veil uh, came across the inquiry because MI6 had a high-placed mole in the Kremlin, mm. right? Yeah. Actually, inside the Kremlin yeah. itself, we've got... Well, you would um, expect MI6 to have a high-placed mole in the Kremlin. Or... GCHQ, that's in Cheltenham. Yeah, where there are no prostitutes. Exactly, where yeah. they're not allowed to have prostitutes As in case the prostitutes earlier. get secrets out somebody, of the Somebody tweeted me, yeah, yeah, another uh, Cheltenham-based mm. escort, actually, yeah, through, okay. during the day. Uh, or, or whether or not GCHQ intercepted electronic communications, mm. which will never be revealed because of the method by which they acquired uh, them. Yes. You see what I mean? Yeah, interesting. It's a that's, right the double, old, uh, that's the trouble with the double-dealing uh, world of spying, Well, it? Because you can't, quite often you can't reveal that you've got certain bits of information well, because everyone would then know where you got it from. That's why I'd never be a spy. Yeah. I'd never be a spy. Well, be- you'd be hopeless at that. I would be hopeless. I'd never you be can't a spy. Keep a secret. Well, yeah, but you wouldn't be able to trust anybody. You'd think, hang on, is that? But you don't trust anyone. Is it? Is it- no, I don't actually. No. Is but what a- you're very good is at he though, a spy is- or a double spy? Yeah. What you're very good at though is spreading mm. misinformation. What do you mean? And disinformation. What do you mean? Well, look at the t- tonight. I mean, you- well, eleven o'clock again. You sent out a tweet saying you were just arriving at Talksport. Yeah, that's right. Well, you weren't here. Well, of course, I was here. Well, where were you? I was here. I was researching for tonight's show. Of no, course. Was- well, I mean, I found, I found you. I found you standing around on the uh, outside <laughs> stairs downstairs yeah. smoking before you came in the building. Yeah, I was talking to a senior colleague. Yeah, and I'd been out and back and in and out and back three times before you arrived. Does that mean you got three more parking tickets to come then? No, it doesn't. Three, three no. more croissants. Somebody's I actually. Find uh, it's an outrage. Yeah, somebody's actually sent the spelling of that. What? Uh, that uh, Porky loves his croissants. K W O S S A N T S. What? Croissants. That's no, how you say it, it. no, it's C R O I double S A N T S croissant. Ah. Croissant. Right. Croissant. Here's one from Steve. He says that bum in DC has probably drunk Ooh. himself to death after the horror of being kidnapped <laughs> by a mad Englishman. <laughs> he probably has, yeah. And uh, Roy says yeah. uh, kidnapping people in yeah. limos, but now because yeah. 160 quid tickets sounds like karma <laughs> is biting him hard <laughs> yeah. in his lard ass. Well, yeah, it might be. It might be. Well, um, uh, yeah, but hang on. What about getting some support for taking a con man off the streets? Well, so you, you know, say. It's all very well being attacked like this, maybe, but it's not right. Maybe it was a case of mistaken identity. Maybe. The the guy you saw the following night was a different guy. No, same guy. You sure? Yeah, with a little pinched face and his glasses and his his strained voice. Arr, arr, excuse me, sir. Mm. Is there a gas station round here? Mm. The other thing they used to do in DC, by the way, is whenever you stopped at a gas station, if you could find one, yeah. was uh, they had big signs: "Do not let anybody pump your gas." Yeah. Because drug dealers used to hang around. Not drug dealers, drug takers used yeah. to hang around. And you know what it's like in America. And then you pay them, and then they just suddenly walk away. They'd uh, they'd say uh, you want you to pump your gas sir, to save you getting out of the car yeah. under self service, yeah. and if you were stupid enough to say, oh yeah, okay, mm. uh, one of two things could happen. 
they could either be pumping your gas into a separate container right. and stealing it. Yes. Or... Or just taking the money up front and all disappearing. Yeah, absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. That was one of the things I found quite hard to get used to, actually, when I first went to work in the States, was that they still had people yeah. to put petrol That's into right. your yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Because they agree. stopped doing that for uh, many years ago. And they, I, they I, was, I was very suspicious. I was like, no, yeah. I, I'll do my own thanks. Yeah, exactly. And they were like, no, you can't do your own. Yeah. This is a, you know, this is a, a, yeah, that's right. an assisted station that's or something right, like that's that. Right. That's right. No, I totally agree. Here's one from Michael. He right. said, I would have sympathy with Porky if it was an emergency mm. when he parked in a bus stop. Yeah. But just to feed his fat face with a <laughs> high in <laughs> carbohydrate <laughs> butty, uh, I'm glad you were fine. Should have been £360. Oh, that's uh, that's very unkind. It's half past four in the morning. There's nobody about. The only the only vehicles parked in, on the same side of that road were these huge sort of 40-ton trucks that bring the supplies to those yeah, retailers, well, you know? They do that then. How is the world supposed to work commercially if customers are being driven away like this? That's well, what I not, say. Well, you're not being driven away, but I it's in the centre away. of a very busy part of London. It's opposite a ra- main, main railway station. There's yeah. no parking there. Yeah. That's the whole point. Partly you, through security, so that people can't leave cars there think, that might, uh, you know, blow up. Do you think James, the cycling victim, was yeah. in a cycle lane? Well, I don't think there is a cycle lane down Sanford Street. I don't is think it? there is actually. No, he got well, hit. Well, I mean, I hope. It, I don't think you should be mocking him. I mean, he's got a broken arm. This guy. Well, he's, the guy came back with his bike, sir. But you see, what I'm suspicious about is the bike didn't look mangled. It no, looked perfectly normal. Do you think the bike has got something inside it? You mean like some kind of? I don't of know. A it's a very strange recording device. For somebody suddenly turn up and say, "Oh, this is James's bike. He's just been knocked to the ground." I didn't see an ambulance. I didn't hear an ambulance. No. You know, uh, very suspicious. Yeah, very weird. Um, uh, Becky says this man of the people for sure. Everyone yeah. goes out in a chauffeur-driven limousine. To get their croissants. Uh, well, I, I wasn't getting croissants when I was in my show for Jim Luna. That was I was off to uh, a hotel to uh, talk to senior politicians from the um, from the Washington D.C. <laughs> what do they call it inside the? Well, inside the Beltway. The Beltway. That's right. Inside the Beltway. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's what you were doing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I How about this one from Foreign Affairs Committee? So maybe people. Porky can park his car on the Everton goal line. Martinez would probably pay him for it. Bus stops are for buses. Yeah. Hashtag plank. Yeah, I'm not going to react to that. And um, Vic says, uh, yeah. who was presumably at Manchester Dance House, yes. uh, lovely time with you shambling old gits last Saturday. Shambling? Yeah. Shambling? I'm not a shambler, mate. It's uh, harsh, isn't it? No, he's describing you the way you shamble around a stage. Well, I mean, if Even you, you, when you saw yourself on video, once said, don't I walk slowly, did you not? I, I did say yeah, I, that's I didn't right, realise yeah. I walked quite so slowly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. That's but your, I don't that, know if that, that, that was uh, slowed down, though. No, that's the story of your life. Yeah. Fact, well, yeah. there's no point in barking if you have a dog, as they say, and there's no point in running about like a maniac when some other idiot can do it for you. There was a John Lennon line on that, wasn't there? Everybody sport. thinks I'm crazy. Mm. I don't care. Uh, no, everybody thinks I'm lazy. I don't care. They're all crazy, right? Running round uh, everywhere. Is this uh, watching the wheels go around? No, 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 this is... Uh, you see the time. Everybody tells me that I'm lazy. I don't care. I think they're crazy. Running everywhere at such a speed. Till they find the uh, similarity between that and Norwegian wood. No. I once no. met a girl, no. or should I say? No. Why not? Why not? There's no similarity at all. Oh, I think it's a completely different melody. As a I'm completely ex- different complexion of, of uh, composition. As I'm an expert no, on... No, but you have uh, no ear for music. On Beatles music. No, I'm not going to argue with you. Now, Lindsay, right. uh, uh, a woman who came to see us yes. in Portsmouth many I remember moons Lindsay, ago, yes. Uh, one of our first ever shows. Uh, the lovely the Lindsay. Tour. Yeah, she, uh, she's a woman that you accused of having mousy hair. Oh, I didn't, did I? Yeah, you did, yeah. Uh, she says, first time listening live due to the fact it's impossible to sleep in hospital. Ah. Thank you for entertaining me. Okay. I don't know what you're in for, uh, Lindsay, but hopefully you won't be in there for too long. Well, Lindsay, get well soon, my dear. Whatever your uh, ailment is, I'm sure you will rally and uh, become the vivacious individual that you have always been. And the reason that I said you were the girl with the mousy hair was actually a compliment because, of course, it was a famous uh, opening line or two in the Bowie song. Which song was it? Uh, it's a god awful small affair Fair. is how it starts. For life the, on Mars, isn't it? For the girl with the mousy hair. Yeah. yeah, it's the life on Mars. There you go. It's a tribute to you. Is there life on Mars? Lindsay, get well soon. John says, why does that plank porky have to say when he lived in Washington, D.C., he lived on the same street as the president? Well, I did. Hashtag snob. Well, hang on, excuse well, me. Well, so did a few million other people. Well, what did you want me to say? Oh, when I lived in Washington, D.C., on a remote road, you know, it just happened to be the yeah, same as the White I, House. But that's the difference between you and I. Yes. I wouldn't say which road I lived on. You would have to say it, because for you, yes. it means something that you lived in the same road as the president. People need you know, to... when I had an office in New York, yeah. I, I had an office on Fifth Avenue. Yes. I didn't go, uh, is Fifth Avenue the same uh, road that Trump Tower's on yes. or the same road that Tiffany's is on? The road that leads to the park? Well, the park? Yes, Central Park. Well, many park. roads lead to the Central yeah. Park. Yeah, well, it's the most well, famous one. My point one. Is, is I just said Fifth Avenue. That was good enough. I believe, I believe in um, status history. 
State, you believe in status? Uh, no, you believe? I believe in status history. If people know that I lived on the same street as the as the President of the United States of America, actually, that's the only reason I had business cards printed, mm. because the address uh, showed I lived on... Well, you didn't uh, have anyone to give them out to anyway, did eh? you? What did they say, your business cards? It, it, it said uh, Michael A. Parry, yeah. uh, U.S. editor, <laughs> Daily Ex- Sorry, what are you laughing at? <laughs> Daily Express. And what did you used to edit, exactly? Sorry? Well, what did you edit? The... All the overseas all the editions. Papers, all the other all papers. No, 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 no. You, you know, know, you know. You no, know, it's just know. a title. It Goodness didn't mean sake. anything. For goodness sake, you know, I was, I was the link, really, between sort of British establishment and the White House in Britain being the yeah. Bri- being the, the bureau chief in Washington of the Daily Express, so which, of course, used to be run so by Lord Beaverbrook. That, so would you say that you were treated with greater respect than, say, for example, the... Uh, Washington bureau chief of the Times. I was I was treated with the same respect really? as him. Yes, absolutely. You sure? Oh, absolutely. Because I, I very much I, doubt it. I had a way with me that. Uh, Do made you know me who popular. the bureau chief of the Times was when you were there? Uh, no idea. No. No idea. So you didn't mix with the Times, then? I couldn't care less about the Times. Really? I only cared about the po- I paper see. that I was responsible for. Uh, uh, here's one from Jim. He says, Good right. to hear Porky advising on the dangers of Trojan horse con men yeah. and entry of buildings. Yeah, that's, uh, absolutely. Does gas leak mean anything to you, Mike? Gas leak? Yeah. Uh, I don't know what that means. Well, yeah, I know what that is. That's uh, Well, that's the famous thing we were taught when we were young journalists, wasn't it? You know, to get into somebody's house, mm. what you do is... I was never taught that. Oh, I was. I, the first thing you do is, if somebody won't answer the door to get into their house, you kick the door down... Literally, uh-huh. and say you smell gas. You know, you, you literally, you know, start kicking. Oh, yeah, are you all right now? You're right now. You know, uh, that's disgraceful. No, I would never do that. No, no, that's what I was taught to do from a very early age. Kick yeah. the door down. Oh, and, that's now illegal. And so I smell gas. Say. On one occasion, when I worked on the Evening Chronicle in Newcastle, right, there was a photographer who was brilliant at it, yeah. and we had to get a picture of the said person in the house who was a, a bent teacher, right? Yeah. And, uh, and, and so we employed this tactic, right? We employed this tactic, and in employing the tactic, we actually got the door open. I then started talking to the household... Do you not say, have any kind of regard for the people inside the house? No, not, not, no. It, I, mean, I was focused. they might be your readers, apart from anything else. No, I was focused on, uh, on the mission in hand. And whilst I was talking to the woman, saying, sorry, I had to smash your door down, but it smelled gas... He, he literally went into the parlour, because they had a parlour in this house in Newcastle, it was very old-fashioned, mm. and he took the picture of the bloke off the top of the piano, put it in his pocket and ran off. And that's how we got the picture on the front page of the Evening Chronicle. Terrible. Yeah, Absolutely no, no, terrible. No, that was just a tactic we used in those days. Ernie says this, uh, yeah. how much shouting would Porky do if someone had parked in his penthouse apartment parking spot? Yes. Man of the people, yeah. my ass. Yeah. Uh, and then he says... Uh, yeah. but uh, that's, that's private land. Uh, I was on a public road. Paid for by my taxes, no, right. and then I get penalised for being on it. Do you pay your road, you pay your road tax in Southwark, do you, or you pay your council? You tax pay your in road Southwark. tax nationally, don't I you? I actually pay my council tax in Southwark, yeah. so I'm very pleased that they're keeping the streets uh, clear of people who think they can park anywhere they like. Oh really? Are you? Yeah, mm, I'm very happy mm, about that. Okay, uh, Jason, maybe says, next time you're in Stockbroker Belt, sorry, will you? And I'll have you I banned. And why would I head to some boring suburban hellhole oh, like that? Oh, boring suburban hellhole. Sorry, Typical porky. more Rolls Royces in Surrey, mate, than any other so location what? in the world, I couldn't care including less. Peking How? and. Uh, Florida and well, California. Was, well, well, that must make you feel very inferior. Including then. Moscow. Well, that must make you feel very inferior driving around yeah. in a poor, poorly sort of 43 grand Merc. Uh, not Everybody at all. else has got a Rolls Royce. Not at all. People might think it's just my second car. Is that what you tell them? No, I bet that is no. what you tell them, isn't no, it? No, I don't. Yeah, no, it is. No, I, I don't. bet that's what you tell them. Um, no, I don't. Oh, yeah, I, I don't. only, I I only don't. take this one out for croissants. No, no, no. no Here's no. one from Jason. Typical yeah. porky thinks he's famous and can park anywhere. Mm. Only Jose Mourinho can park yeah. the bus. Yeah, well... Uh, and Francis says, how about this? Cheer up, porky. It's the Merseyside derby next week. Another chance to talk about a great yeah. Liverpool victory. Worries me about Hashtag that Hashtag sore loser. <sighs> I'm not sore loser, honestly. I don't believe we'll lose that anyway. Right. Mm. Um, now, we've got to talk to uh, Tommy Smith at some point Excellent. soon, I suppose, haven't we? But uh, uh, we'll get to him. As he's uh, not here, we won't, uh, as we won't talk as to him. Here, we won't now, talk to him. I'll tell you what I will talk to you about, right? This is a very interesting one. Do you know how much the um, National Health Service, of which I've been a subscriber for over 40 years... No, you have been a net, uh, you have been a net purchaser. I've been uh, a subscriber. And user of the, of, of, of the... I mean, imagine how much money you've cost the NHS over the years. Uh, I'm you gonna, ever I, thought about oh, I'm going to tell you some real uh, tragic figures about the NHS in a minute, right? Mm. We just have to sort of get something out of the way. Then I'm going to tell you. I'm going right. to frighten you. All right, well, I should look forward to yeah. that. Uh, yeah. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. It's Porky Quiz Night, of course. This is 
Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Coming up in the next hour, we're going to talk to a psychic detective about Fabien Delph uh, and his admission that he's seen ghosts at least four times. Mm. Uh, as I said earlier, you might have seen the ghost of his career going by at one point. Uh, here's one from Natasha. Uh, who says, I'm due to run out of petrol tomorrow about noon in Ealing. Any chance of Mike Parry sending a tenner and a limo along? Well, I'm here I don't to... know quite whether that's some kind of uh, code for something. I, is, is that uh, young lady the Russian? Uh, she is Russian, yeah, I believe, uh, yeah. She might be from the FSB. She's I better be previous... careful. She's... Uh, She's previously supported uh, you in, uh, in your Excellent. various endeavours uh, about Russia. Let's talk to Tommy Smith, though, yep. because uh, we are getting behind already on the show. Tommy, very good morning to you. Good morning, Mike and Mike. Now, yeah, I don't want to hear Tommy. anybody, uh, and includes Mike Parry in this conversation, I don't think you're guilty of it, anybody ever saying the Europa League is a worthless competition uh, with a load of teams in it nobody's ever heard of? Because after last night, one of the greatest European Cup ties of all time, you'd have to say uh, it has come of age, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would think it's come of age. I would say Borussia Dortmund are seeing ghosts tonight. Yeah. They're seeing ghosts uh, of Anfield. I mean, they had a, a game that looked like they had it salted away. But, I mean, it was, uh, as I tweeted earlier, it was shades of Istanbul all over again for Liverpool, wasn't it? It really was, yeah. And what a great night uh, for the fans, a great night for Jurgen Klopp. You know, maybe it's a turning point for him as well. Yeah, it could be. I mean, he definitely saw his team come of age. I mean, his big problem now is who does he keep and who does he get rid of and who does he bring in? He's got a lot of decisions to make because even though Liverpool had a fantastic victory tonight, you know, guys, they looked very shaky for a long, long time. Yeah, but I think at the end of the day, Tommy, the result is all in a situation like that, isn't it? You know, yeah. and, and, and by the way, it, you know, I heard commentators earlier saying, oh, it wasn't very good first half and all that. I, I think they should really dwell on the positive. To come back from a situation where you were 2-0 down at home at half-time and, you know, to, to demonstrate willpower and determination to get past one of the best teams in Europe is incredibly positive. I don't think there's anything negative about it at all. No, I don't think there's any negative about it either. In fact, I tweeted at halftime if Liverpool had taken their chances, they would have been 4-2 up because they had so many clear-cut opportunities. Mm. I mean, they created... I don't care what anybody tells me. They created good scoring opportunities in the first half that didn't take them. Second half, they got the chances that did take them. So they had, you know, that attitude of never giving up and you've got to give them an awful lot of credit and you've got to give the fans an awful lot of credit. Yep. I mean, the atmosphere listening to it uh, was unbelievable tonight. Yeah, in, in, indeed, it was unbelievable. They go through now. I suppose it's got to be their priority now to win this trophy, Tommy, and therefore... Nobody could actually blame them if they started rowing back on their ambitions for a place in the Premier League because they're not going to get into the top four. Yeah, I mean, now is their chance. I mean, win this trophy, and this time, for the first time ever, you go into the Champions League if you win it. So why would you bother about the Premier League at this stage? And, I mean, I don't, I'm don't. i not, you know, shaking the Premier League down a bit or anything like that. But, hey, you got a big, big fish to fry here. Why not go for the big frying pan and go for it? No, I think yeah. you're absolutely right, because Villarreal are left in. I mean, Sevilla, who have won it last two years, are obviously going to be tough, but Shakhtar Donetsk, they should be able to beat them. I mean, if they get Shakhtar Donetsk, they're in the final. I would thought, wouldn't they? Yeah, I would imagine so. I would imagine so. But then again, you know, we have to be careful uh, when we start looking at teams that we want to get. Uh, uh, everybody wanted Wolfsburg. They nearly knocked Real Madrid out. And, you know, you've got to be careful. Some of these teams can, when they get to this stage of the competition, but you would have to say, if you were making a, a, a book at the moment, you would have to say that Liverpool have to be close to be favourites for it. Yeah, I would think so, because also they've got a fantastic pedigree in Europe. You know, you talked about shades of Istanbul and all that. OK, it's not the same players as it was then, but the tradition Liverpool carry into Europe, I think, can worry the teams they're playing up, you know, they're up against. They see their pedigree and they say, wow, look what they've done in the past. Yeah, I mean, so many times teams are actually half beaten before they go out on the field because of the team they're playing. You know, you go out against Barcelona, you dread it. They're half beaten already. Liverpool have that pedigree. I mean, when you look at uh, the European Cup and look what Liverpool did in the European Cup, I mean, it's absolutely incredible what they have done. So they have a very, very rich history and they are one of the biggest, biggest football clubs in the world. Uh, just Indeed. very quickly, Tommy, because we're nearly out of time. Uh, Premier League back this weekend. Can you see anyone breaking into the top four? I mean, it's looking more and more like the four that are there are going to be the four that stay there at the end, isn't it? Yeah, it does look that way. Although maybe the Champions League might distract City a little bit and maybe it might have them slip up. I mean, I don't understand. I'm looking at the bookies to have Chelsea favourite over City on the, the weekend. Yeah. 
So, you know, you can't always go by the bookies, but, you know, sometimes there's a little rumbling there. Maybe they will be distracted, and, uh, you know, maybe United will get in. And what about if you have a Champions League final? You have City against Bayern Munich, and you have City uh, knock Bayern Munich out, and... uh, the new manager of City has to manage in uh, the Europa League next year if City don't make the top four. Yeah, no, that's absolutely there's, right. There's all kinds of permutations. There's a massive, certainly uh, massive weekend, of yeah, course. And we'll yeah. be doing all the uh, talk sports uh, predictors uh, 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 league chart coming up uh, a little bit later on in the show as well. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> we are the two mics. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out, of course. We've got loads and loads of tweets to read out as well. Yep. Uh, David says this. Uh, Porky will have to stop criticising Mike Graham for £75 bottles of champagne after paying £160.70 for a croissant, which I think is fair enough. How much? Uh, £160.70. Well, pence. Yeah, I'm afraid, yeah, that's right. The croissant was only 70p, obviously, yeah. but my God, did I get ripped off for it that? A very, it's an absolute very, damn disgrace. A very, very really expensive is. one. Now, here's one from Brian yeah. in Islington. He says, Dear Mr Graham, I've seen the parking warden who patrols Southwark at night. Funnily enough, he wears a woolly hat with a Liverpool badge on it. Oh, yeah. I think he's just being funny. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me. Uh, and uh, here's one from uh, Charlton Kev. Uh, mm-hmm. It says, Michael A. Parry, business card. What does the A stand for? And then he suggests a couple of things that begin with A, Alan. which I can't read out. Michael Allen Parry. Alan Parry. Wasn't there an Alan Parry that was a commentator? Oh, yeah, he was a good broadcaster. Yeah. And everybody thought I was him sometimes, really? or he was me. Yeah. What happened to him? Uh, I think Did you might... ever impersonate him to get in anywhere? I think you'll find he is now a regular... TV broadcaster still... on something like, well, I don't know, Sky or BT or something no, like that. He could but well he, be. He was very able. I mean, he was very to, good. Yeah, I remember used, his name well. We used to employ him here at uh, Talk Sport. He ah. was very good at what he did. Ah, okay. And I'm sure he's still around, making a um, a uh, a very decent living from his very able abilities. Ah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Patrick says this regarding Champions League places. Liverpool winning Europa League does not impact Premier League places. Mm. Uh, if Manchester City win Champions League and finish fifth, yep. then fourth does not get a Champions League spot, yeah. regardless of Liverpool. Well, I think that's more or less sorted out. That I think yes. we kind of know what's going on there. Yes. Um, uh, a. Cripps says, parking signs are very confusing. The mere presence of a bus stop and parallel red lines is very sneaky. Yeah, it is. It is. I, gr- I agree. It is. Absolutely. I, I, I think he's being ironic there. Oh, uh, is he? And here's yeah. one from uh, uh, somebody called Joey, uh, mm. who says, Dear God, Parry used to work in Washington, D.C., did he? Yeah. Crikey, the Americans must have been hard up. No, they weren't hard up at all. It was just that it, it was another elevated um, promotion in my glittering newspaper career, yes. you know? As, as, right it's, as, it's, uh, as, it's, often, as it's often described. Yeah. Now, uh, how about this one from Touchpoint? I'm disappointed with Mike Parry. Couldn't mm. he have argued his heart classes him as disabled, so he shouldn't get a fine? Well, do you know what? I When I first came out of hospital all those years ago, mm. I was offered one of those blue badge disabled um, yeah. uh, st- uh, tickets. You why know? did you take one? Because I said I'm not disabled. I mean, I am disabled, but I decided <laughs> that I was not going to be recognised within society and, and put into the disabled What's bracket. What's wrong with that? Well, because, I, you know, I, I feel that I am able to lead a, an able-bodied life, even though I am disabled. I fought against adversary. What I didn't expect to do was to come up against mealy-mouthed, loathsome uh, people who sit in offices uh, with the worst job in the world, spotting motorists who they can fine £160 mm. pounds for because well, they, uh, they've got all, nothing better to do. Do. Isn't it all done automatically? No, it's not done automatically. A human being in the end has to pick and choose. Now, no. listen, I've got a question for no, you I here. I think if you pull in one of those places where you're not supposed to be, yeah. the, the camera automatically takes a picture. And then the picture is ultimately put through the system, and then it goes to your, it goes to DVLA, who then give them the address, and off you go. Do you know what the strangest thing is? What the offence is alleged to have occurred on the twenty sixth of February. Really? Yeah. Now the twenty sixth of February. Yeah. Yeah. Well, now, so maybe it wasn't the other night then. What? Well, maybe it wasn't the other night. Well, I night. make the same trip sort of, uh, you know, every week. Well, maybe really. you've got about another five coming then. Yeah, well, I could have, I don't know. But the problem is that... So I looked at the day and I thought, hang on, what's going on here? But the, but it was dated as being sent to me on the 11th of April, which is very weird, yeah. which is Monday this week, isn't it? It is. Yeah, so anyway, I don't know. Well, I'll sort it out. Yeah. But I'm going to get a picture of it and put it out on uh, Twitter just to embarrass... A picture of who? A picture of my uh, notice, my oh, right. demand. OK. Just to embarrass the authorities. I don't think they'll be embarrassed. You shouldn't be able to pick on well, people like I mean, me. you could always appeal it. I mean, what are you trying doing that? Well, I can't because there's a picture of I me mean, in, inside the, the bus area. When you know? I lived in Edinburgh, not only did I appeal every single uh, ticket yeah. that I ever got yeah. successfully, but I also uh, used to appeal on behalf of the radio station because we had radio cars in those days. Right. Uh, because for some bizarre reason, yeah. it was thought to be a good idea to get the reporters all uh, kitted up in, you know, Talk 107 yeah. cars. Yeah. So they were always getting tickets all over town. Ridiculous. Because, you know, 
imagine the expense of doing that, right? The expense of doing uh, that. And all the, uh, the the reporters all had minis. We talked about seven all over him. Yeah. And uh, the sales staff all had uh, BMW One Series. Right. You know, so they're all these talk one oh seven. That's quite a good way of advertising. Actually. You didn't have a very good job, did you? You have to you had to chase up parking tickets. I and mean, I thought you were supposed to be the program director. Yeah, no, I was the program director. Well, you, but no, you were chasing I, up the parking. Yeah, tickets. because it made, it made for very good radio. Because I was seen as the man that could get anybody off a parking ticket. At any point, no matter what the parking ticket offence okay. was, I got them off, and so, I always so, got them off. Because so, not only was I the programme, I also did a show. Yeah. You know, you so, might remember when you did that. Yeah, so gerrymandering, then, has not been, uh, you know, it's been a part of your life for a very long no, time. No, 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 you'd be yeah. amazed. I mean, because yeah. what happened was, we, we once, well, you, we used to speak on a fairly regular basis to a guy who was also very good at this, yes. and he would give you advice on how to get out of parking tickets. Yeah, very good. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. You won't know the answer to it, but you'll be astonished. Why would you ask me a question to which I don't know the answer? Well, because nobody would know the answer to this one. It's so right. ridiculous. Okay. How much do you think the National Health Service spends each year on toothpaste, which is doled out yeah. to patients mm. in doctors' surgeries mm. on a prescription. They give people prescription toothpaste. I couldn't believe this really? myself. Well, given that the budget for the NHS is some ridiculous amount of money, like, like what? Nine billion or Ten something. Ten billion, I yeah. think it is. Yeah. Uh, I would imagine uh, you're talking at least a million pounds, maybe more. You won't believe this, Mike. 1.1 uh, 1. 1 million prescriptions... Yeah. Uh, of toothpaste last year cost seventeen and a half million pounds. Seventeen and a half. Seventeen and a half million pounds. Well, so what is it? Seventeen quid a tube then? Uh, it's just How ridiculous. I've, I've no idea. If they're given a million prescriptions. You won't believe this. Listen to this. That's seventeen pounds a tube. The NHS spends millions handing out toothpaste. Calpol. Yeah. I thought Calpol was known as the liquid cosh to put well, babies out when they're, <laughs> when, they're, when they're being troublesome. I know that's how you refer to it, but yeah. no, it's a, it's a painkiller for kids. All right, it's right. not the liquid cosh. Right. Toothpaste, Calpol. And, that's Ritalin, I think you're thinking and, of. And Barocca vitamin pills. Oh, yeah. Barocca, have you ever seen them? Well, I've seen people here taking them. Yeah. yeah people they're... take them for sort of hangovers. Yeah, that's right. Like, yeah. like fizzy stuff you put yeah. into water yeah, and all that right, kind of yeah. stuff. Right. I've never tried it myself. Um, according to latest figures, patients are also, also routine prescribed on prescription, right, Strepsils, Bongella, yeah. Rennie indigestion pills and Olka-Seltzer. But, why they get, but you know why this will be, though? This will be because these are people who don't pay for their prescriptions, presumably. Well, I don't know. The item... Because why would you... No, because why would you pay for a prescription, which would be seven quid or whatever it is now, I, I don't know. plus the toothpaste, when you're getting it for free? I don't know. The items cost the NHS tens of millions of pounds a year and are widely handed out while vital surgery and cancer drugs are rationed yeah. to those who most need them. Yeah, that's true. The figure raises concerns that some patients are pressurising GPs and dentists for prescriptions so they can avoid paying for household essentials yeah. at the chemist. Yeah, but that's why this whole system of free prescriptions is mad. You know, absolutely, completely and utterly bonkers mad. Yeah. Because by far and away, the people who most use prescriptions are those who don't pay for them. It's unbelievable. Yeah, it's the, re the report from the Health and Social Care Information Centre yeah. for last year showed that more than 1.1 million prescriptions were written for tubes of Colgate toothpaste uh, and Sensodyne uh, at a cost of £17.5 million. Pounds. Right. So you're absolutely right. It's costing seven quid a tube. Yeah, I know. Unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Absolutely. Now, I've got a question for you. This has been sent in by JD. Right. Uh, he says he's listening live for a change as he's in the USA. Yeah. Uh, he says, does Porky recognise these gates? Let me have do a look. Do you recognise those gates? Let me have a look, please. Right. They look actually like something more from this country than now, they the do gates, from America. Gates, authorised point only. Is that... I mean, it's not the and White where's House. It, where's, it? It, where's he writing to he, me from? He says it's in America. He doesn't say where. OK. No, it's not the White House. It's not the it's, White House. Is that the old post office on uh, Pennsylvania Avenue? Uh, I don't know. The Gates 2. I'm not sure. I don't recognise it. Uh, I don't recognise it either. I have to say, and, and it's got a vaulted ceiling um, I mean, it looks more hallway. like a sort of a church-type entrance here, doesn't yeah, it? it? Does. Or, or it does, yeah. yeah, yeah. Or yeah, 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 it does. Mm. I wonder if it... I wonder if it's the entrance to Bray's Nose College, Oxford. Well, do you think that you're just using that? You, you yeah. don't recognise it, well, do you? Well, I don't know. That also looks like an English sign. Yeah. What is the answer? Uh, well, I don't know. But no, maybe it doesn't. That could be uh, that could be an American could sign it? outside an American. Well, we'll have to ask JD to send us in. Yeah, uh, please. Uh, uh, his location yes, yes. and where these gates are. Yes. We'd Matt like says to know. Porky got caught breaking the law and he got fined for it. Mm. My heart bleeds for the rich man of the people. Uh, I'm, I'm. See, there's a lot of bitterness out there about you. Yeah, there's a lot of bitterness out there. But there's a lot of bitterness in here that you lot are all now, you know, all you lot. Smirking and smiling and rubbing your well, you hands together. Millions of listeners that adore you. Chattering behind my back, you know, <laughs> you're pathetic. <laughs> Let's just talk sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio.
a bit of the Manic Street Preachers there for you. Oh, yeah. Because That's you right. know why we are going to Cardiff coming up in uh, May, May the 7th. Hello, boy. I'm looking forward to it very much indeed. Yeah. Return to Cardiff. Went there for five consecutive FA Cup finals, right? Yeah. Love Cardiff. Stayed in the Marriott. Um, uh, now, we're going to the tram shed, aren't we? We are. And that's the other side of the railway line. It's just, the other side the, it's, well, it's just across the River Taff. If that's you imagine right. where, yeah. the, uh, where the yeah. Millennium Stadium is, yeah, I know as, you go, yeah. Across, yeah. as you go into one of the entrances of it, oh, yes. there's a river on the left-hand side. That's right, of course there is. If you, there's a little bridge over the river, yep. uh, and uh, over on the other side is where the tram shed is. Excellent, that's great, because uh, one year we went there, and they hadn't fully developed the... Um, the executive facilities, oh. you know, the, uh, what do you call it, the well, entertaining. The bladderation box. Yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. And so they put them in uh, Cardiff Arms Park. Oh, yeah. Now, I thought Cardiff Arms Park had been knocked down. No. And they'd built Millennium on mm. top of it. No, but in it fact, they built it. it next door. That's right, yeah. And so the Arms Park, as it is, is still there. I mean, it's a bit of a wreck, you know. It's not a... It's not like a world famous, a world well, it, it renowned was, it was, stadium. It was a pretty well renowned stadium. Oh yeah, but, I mean, it, was. it wasn't, in, yeah, yeah, wasn't yeah. in great shape. No, was it? I mean you know great people like uh, who what was his name? J P P was it? Uh, what? Uh, J P Edwards. J P Edwards. It was, was Gareth he? Edwards. Gareth Edwards. Yeah. Gareth Edwards and J P J P R Williams. J P R Williams is yeah. the guy I'm thinking He's of. The right? guy with the long hair. Guy with the long hair. He was mm. a doctor. Right. And uh, he played there. And do you know who I met uh, when I was in Washington on one occasion? Who? Tony What's His Namer, who played. Tony What's His Namer? He ran Hines. Oh, oh yeah, I know. Yeah. yeah and, and he was a. He was a, he was a Oh, he's an Irish. R- Tony O'Reilly. Tony O'Reilly, he's an Irish rugby he player. He was Irish. Actually. He didn't yeah. play at the Carms he, Park. He, unless, well, he might. He would have unless he was playing for Ireland. That's right. For yeah. Ireland. yeah, but I met him in Ireland. He, in uh, in uh, Washington, he was good. Now, anyway, listen. The point is, when are we going? Three weeks on Saturday. Uh, yeah, May the seventh. We're going to the tram shed. It's the two mics live on stage there. It's going to be a night of bladderation. Not sure about Rogerisation, but we'll, we'll sort that out when we get there. We'll see. And, um, so many of my, my old friends from my days in Cardiff. And we're up. looking forward to a great night, folks. Our last one was in Manchester. It sold out. People were banging on the doors of the theatre to try and get in. Don't be caught no, they're out. they banging on the doors of the theatre to try and get out. Yeah, try and get out. That's right, yeah. Don't be caught out. The tickets are available on the 2 mikescouk our website. And there is or you a... can find them on the Tramshed uh, Facebook page or you can find them on Twitter as well. If you you can, and there's a link which I'll put out on my own Twitter account which oh, really? takes you directly to the box office. Well, we're looking forward very much to coming down, OK? We are. Uh, Dan says this uh, mm. about your parking ticket. It'll be the first ticket Porky's paid for in a long time. Hashtag hospitality, host, hashtag man of the people. Oh, that's very nice. And Danny says, poor Porky, surrounded by Rolls Royces in his inferior Merc. Yeah, hashtag peasant. That's a bit harsh. Uh, that is a bit one, harsh. Uh, from uh, from Danny who says, can't wait for the quiz to compound the misery of Porky. Well, I'm predicting two out of ten and a lot of finger pointing. Oh, that's, uh, that's uh, you know, you're losing faith in me, folks, because of the gerrymandering that went on in Wyndham's losers the other night that got to not that, true that, that became a very tense and stressful situation let me tell you why was it stressful well because you know you were you were trying to cheat on, in not such an obvious fashion well no but we've we've, we've come to a, a, an easy compromise now well you have to you, you have, have to, to the, because the, the game will commence again on monday yeah monday night yeah. And, and the scores will be nil nil so pop- you'll have an opportunity to actually win one your popularity was sinking so fast yeah but i'm not worried about my popularity well, you, see, you, you spend be, most you of your life worried about how popular you no, are no i don't no, yes no, you do no, no, no. and i have no concerns about i that. don't think you are listen i tell you what, I'm never going on a cruise again. What do you uh, mean again? Well, I've never been on one, actually, but I mean, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going on a cruise. Do you know what? I have uh, come across this If ca- you went on a cruise, yeah. I would see you doing what that mad woman did, which was jumping off the quayside Tom, to Tom try to swim after the boat. Because you'd, yeah. you'd have missed the departure time due to being overbladdered uh, yeah. in a nearby sort of hostelry. Well, apart from anything else, my mate last year, I told you the story, he went mm. on a cruise, he never got off, he That's died true. on board. It yeah. was terrible. Well, lots of people um, do die on board cruise ships. They do, actually. They do, I'm afraid, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, the... But, like a uh, sort of moving, um, uh, you know, waiting room for, uh, for, yes. for purgatory or whatever Yeah, you want but to as it. part of my interest, of course, in the Royal Navy and my, you know, my uh, maritime links that I have down in Portsmouth, oh, yeah. I do... Oh, the Admiral. Uh, yeah, I do have access to uh, naval architecture-type um, scientific papers, right? Naval architecture? Yeah. Do you know the French have just... Um, uh, have just uh, commissioned, right? Yeah. Four one billion euro... Ocean liners. Ocean liners? Yeah, which are going to be the, the best and the biggest in the world. I didn't realise the French were big on uh, cruising, actually, yeah, to be honest. Yeah, they are. They Cruise are. ships. Uh, oh, I'll tell you what, they're not. They're going to... Hang on, they're going they're to build them. They're going to build them yeah. and sell them to the, to the Brits. No, the Swiss-based... Swiss have, have uh, ordered them. Really? MSC Cruises, Swiss-based group, has placed an order for four $1 billion um, cruise vessels. But right. the, the statistics, Mike, are absolutely amazing, OK? Are they? 
The liners are going to be 200,000 tonnes each. Right. That's about ten times bigger than the original cruise liners, mm. you know, from well, sort like of the 60s QE2 and 70s. Or That's right, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, well, when you see these things now, I mean, the last yeah. time I was really, I suppose, in, in the presence of any of these things was yes. when I was down in Naples. Right. Because the Bay of Naples, they pull into. Yes, that's and right. Yeah. things are huge. Oh, I mean, huge. I mean, bigger than any building that was in any, oh, any I, way. I see them at Southampton sometimes. And, it's ridiculous. And they, they block the sunlight yeah. out and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, do you know how many cabins these, these ships are going to have? They must have thousands. 2,700 yeah. cabins. Right. Now, if we ever go to one of these hotels with 2,700 rooms, mm. like Frankfurt Airport yeah. or somewhere in America, right. you'd see them. They, I mean, they're cities. Yeah. They're, they're absolute, well, these are floating cities, right. right? Well, you get lost, wouldn't you? Yeah, the technology on board will include facial recognition so that bar staff can greet passengers by name so when you walk up, your yeah. name, you know, is facially recognised. Well, they'd recognized. probably recognise you anyway because you'd be there so much. Well, that's probably true. Uh, Greek passengers by name and in their language. Yeah. So, you know, they'd speak English to me, obviously. And obviously. Scottish to you or whatever. <laughs> uh, and they know what you drink. So yeah. by the time you got to the bar, my glass of uh, Pinot Grigio would already be there waiting yeah. for me. Okay. Right. Children will be equipped with tracking devices mm. because the ship is so big, their parents will never be able to find them. No. Uh, but with the tracking device, they can watch them on the screen as they play at the other end of the ship, mm. which incidentally is 335 metres long. Really? Yes. See, that's a massive thing. I mean, the I used length to, of four uh, When I was little, we used, to take a, uh, mm. we used to take the ferry uh, from Southampton to Bilbao, right. uh, which was what we thought was called the HMS Patricia, I think it was. OK, yeah. And you put the car on it. Yeah, and you'd, the you'd overnight land. ferry. Uh, I think it was a 24-hour ferry. Yeah, OK, and yeah. And you would arrive in Bilbao with the car and we'd drive, through, right. drive through Spain. Yeah. And, I mean, they had a swimming pool on it, which yes. was quite a small swimming yes. pool. With salt water, which I didn't like. No. Um, but we used to get lost on that one. Yeah, exactly. Because it was, yeah. I mean, but that's only a tiny, tiny uh, yeah, portion yeah, of that it, size. It is, yeah. Anyway, uh, the theatre alone has cost £21 million uh, to host performances by troops such as Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. Right? There's a museum to exhibit art loaned by museums from all over the world with yeah. uh, paintings worth millions, yeah. right? Uh, including by Michelangelo, uh -huh. Titian... Titian. Titian, yeah. yeah. And Canaletto. Oh, yeah. I mean, this is amazing. This is absolutely amazing. Um, it's a bit dangerous putting originals on there, isn't it? What? It's a bit dangerous putting original paintings on there. I suppose they're in very strong glass boxes yeah, or something. Yeah, but what if it sinks, though? Well, they're... Well, well, they lost forever. Yeah, yeah, they go down with them. That's right. Now, the new cruise liners will be fitted with a vast cylinder-shaped tank, 25 metres long, to contain an, uh, LNG. LNG? Yeah. What's that? That's petrol, I think. Is it? LNG was cheaper and more ecological. Oh, I see. It's LNG is this fuel they use, uh -huh. and it's like that... Uh, is it unleaded? It's unleaded, but it's also... It's a waste product-type fuel from butter and all that oh, kind of it? stuff. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what that I mean? That stuff stinks. I once got on a boat in Mexico that smelled like it was being powered by chip pan oil. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm. It smelled like chips were being fried. Is it? Yeah. Anyway, the engine of the line will be able to run on traditional fuels as well mm. as the LNG. Uh -huh. That'll be necessary in case they call up ports and able to supply the liquefied uh, nitrogen gas. Yeah. That's what it is. Now then, uh, the other thing you should know is... Mm. Uh, hang on, T uh, nine, they're going to cost $9 billion. Ships will be delivered in 2017, right? Yeah. Well, anyway, that, I mean, they've got so much technology on board, it's unbelievable. Yes, I can imagine. Mm. Maybe we should go on a cruise, you and I. Why? Well, Why? go and like, do a few shows on a cruise. Oh, well, I wouldn't mind doing that, but as long as I have a separate well, cabin to you at the other end of the well, ship. I definitely wouldn't want the same cabin. Well, well no, no, that but wouldn't you, happen. No, but you can't. Well, I'll tell you, funny thing mm. is, I, the, when I was on the QE2. It's the Actually, only, I wonder if you could smoke on a ship. Well, you must be able to smoke on the open deck, surely. Well, you would have thought so, yeah. yeah. But you know but, how weird people are about smoking. Well, stuff. that's true. I think but, a smoking cabin, that'd be great. It'd be the way to travel, wouldn't it? Well, you if you had a balcony, you could go out on the balcony and smoke. Well, you can't smoke anywhere else. Well, you can't smoke on a train. No, no, that's true, no. Can't smoke in a car no, now, that's unless true. you're on your own in a car. When I was on the QE2, right, and that mm. is the only, like, cruise thing I've ever been on, I just don't fancy cruises. From, no, apart, I, don't, I don't fancy cruises. Apart from reason. anything else, when you, when you go to the restaurant on the first night, sit at your table, whichever boring bums are at the table from another cabin, mm. you, you're stuck with them for the rest of the cruise. Well, also, you would be mm. upsetting so many people yeah. that you couldn't get away from. That would well, be I embarrassing. I, d I, d I don't think so. Now, but, uh, um, I've got a, yeah. a second note here from JD. Do you okay. know what that, uh, that uh, doorway was that he sent you? No, go on. It was the Dakota building 
in uh, New York. Oh, do you know it is? Yeah, of course it is. Mm. And the little booth where the uh, doorman sits is yeah. just on the left there. Yeah. It's like a, it's like a cigar, isn't it? Like a cigar. Well, to be honest, I've never been to the actual entrance. Oh, of the I have. It's, it's like a cigar. You know, you, you know, I'm not maudlin like that. You know that metal tube they put a cigar in. Yeah. That's, that's what the the doorman's uh, booth looks like. Really? Yeah. And he said he, he when I spoke to him there, he said ten times a day he has to come out mm. and pose for a picture in front of those gates yeah. for people who come from all over the world yeah. to take pictures of the spot where John. Le- yes, I stand on the spot where Did John. Did you Lennon- take a picture? No, I didn't. know. Yeah, he stands on this actual spot where uh-huh. John Lennon was gunned down. Right. You know, it's pretty more than that. That is very more than, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Uh, we've got lots more to talk about, lots more tweets. So you can send them in, of course, at the two mics, at Mike Perrier, at I R O M G. Coming up next, though, uh, we're going to talk about ghosts because mm. Fabian Delft says mm. uh, that he's seen quite a few of them. Uh, and we're going to speak to Bonnie Event, who's a psychic detective, uh, to find out what it's all about. This is Talk Sport. There's something strange in your neighbourhood. Sport, we are the two mics. We've got lots to do between now and the end of the show. Of course, it's uh, coming up the Porky Quiz, uh, which is going to be on the uh, American Civil War. And of course, I was telling you about the American Civil War battlegrounds the other night. Yes. Uh, and how my ex wife used to say that she could hear voices and right. sort, of, sort of see ghosts and yep. spirits and things like that around yep. that kind of thing. Yep. We're going to talk to an expert now, Bonnie Vent. Uh, mm-hmm. She's on TV. She's a medium, a psychic detective. Great. Right. Uh, because Fabian Delph. Uh, footballer for Manchester City, who hasn't played for them very much lately, uh, says that he sees ghosts all the time. Mm-hmm. Um, and he describes, uh, you know, sounds, banging banging around, that kind of thing. He says that yep. uh, he looks at faces, he sees all kinds of shapes and, and all kinds of things. I'm wondering if certain people see things well, that other people don't see. Well. So I'm going to ask Bonnie, because mm. uh, I've never personally seen one. Bonnie, a very good morning to you. Hi, how are you guys? Yeah, very, very well, well indeed. Thank you. thank you very much for uh, for coming on to the show and, and helping us to figure this one out. Um, I've, 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 we're both ex-journalists. I suppose you might say some of us still are journalists, but we've both done stories about ghosts and hauntings and that kind of thing. And um, I've never physically seen a ghost, but I've been to places and interviewed people who say that they have in the past. Is it is it the case that some people see them and other people don't? Uh, well, it seems to be, and usually people see them by accident, mm. like in his case. It just, like, went as a flash. Right. He wasn't intending to see something. He just did. Right. And if you see something um, and it is a ghost, I mean, are you pretty sure that that's what it is? I mean, I, I know that may sound like a silly question, but if you see something which is from, the, you know, another dimension, are you immediately struck with that I know that's a ghost because it couldn't be anything else? Well, you know, not necessarily, because there is a thing called latent energy, which he talks about actually seeing someone walk across holding a body and going out the door. Um, That sounds more like latent energy, because he was not really in contact. There was no communication going on. Mm. Mm. So that sounds more like picking up on an energy pattern from something that happened in the past. But we'd need to know what hotel he stayed at to be able to do that kind of research. But I did do some poking around, and there is a hotel in Dudley Mm. that uh, claims to have something very similar to what he said he experienced. Mm -hmm. And these are sightings from other people that stay in the hotel. They've seen ghostly apparitions, furniture moving on its own whispering in their ears, sensations of being touched and the sheets being pulled off the bed. Mm, it's all very so interesting. If he stayed at the Dudley, then I would say, yeah, he's probably telling you what he actually experienced. Yeah, absolutely, because his brain's wired to it. Now, Bonnie, because you're a psychic detective, can you tell me this? What actually is a ghost, in your opinion? What I'm saying is that the general acceptance in the Christian world is when you die, uh, you either go to heaven or you go to hell. What is a ghost? Is a ghost somebody who's tormented and doesn't want to go into the next life? Or is it, is it somebody who can't get into the next life for some unknown reason? Or are they trapped in some sort of, you know, uh, warp, some sort of cosmic warp, which uh, prevents them from moving on? Well, in, in speaking with people who are in that kind of situation, I refer to them as spirit people, uh, some of them actually stay back for particular reasons, and they can be uh, loving reasons, like they yep. want to hang out with their family still, and they want to visit their family. That's the most commonly reported thing, mm-hmm. is somebody senses their grandmother or their grandfather or someone who they know has passed yep. uh, come back to say goodbye and that kind of thing. That's the most common thing. Uh, when you get into these haunted hotels, these people have 
have died in places that are not their home. Yeah. So it's already an unfamiliar situation. So in the case of haunted hotels, a lot of times something tragic happened to them, and they're waiting for an answer or to get their story straight. Yeah, but if it's a choice, I'm sorry, Bonnie, if it's a choice, then there, must, there should be millions of ghosts and millions of ghost sightings because most people want to stay with a loved one, you know, when they die. They'd like to still be around. So why are ghost sightings so rare? Well, apparently not. Apparently it's more compelling to go and move on. Ah. You know, everyone talks about this. It's kind of a... a, a, a frame of language that we use yeah. it's like oh they went to yeah. a better place they went to a happier place rest in peace mm. uh so yeah. apparently it's better there than it is here so they come back and they say you know hey you know i'm okay i'm doing fine and then they go do whatever they're going to do next yeah i suppose yeah. that depends on where you are at the time well i, mean, I suppose it does yeah. but i mean you take a battlefield where people die yeah. you know like on the first day of the somme battle in the first world war fifty thousand men died on the first morning of that battle you would think, wouldn't you, that if you went to that battlefield, mm. there would be a lot of ghosts around of tormented men who didn't die at their homes, torn away from their families and all that. I mean, I do find the whole concept of, of ghosts difficult to accept in, uh, you know, in, in a, a general level. It has to be specific to an individual. Well, in, in places like Gettysburg, which is what I'm far, more familiar with, yeah. uh, Gettysburg, you actually do have a lot of energy on those battlefields. Right. And, the, you know, the battles continue to rage on, and people experience it, and they see it. And see, my ex-wife used to see this. Because when you've died instantly, mm. you're going to have that energy just you know, going right out into that atmosphere. My, yeah, my ex-wife was, was driven sort of uh, temporarily kind of mad by this because right. she would go to these places, and she said she could hear... Well, like Gettysburg. Yeah, she yeah. could hear the battle, yeah. and she could feel this kind of uh, force, and mm. it was quite unsettling for us who didn't feel it because mm. we were all like, well, we don't see anything, we didn't mm. feel anything or hear mm. anything, which is why kind of I was asking you that... Uh, maybe some people are more um, attuned Receptive. to it, if you like. Yeah. Yeah, some people are. Some people are, are very closed off to the whole notion of it. And so they will explain away everything that they experience as well. And then some people will go the opposite and everything will be considered a paranormal experience. And you're actually somewhere in the middle. Mm hmm. But in places like that, where you've had a lot of death all in one place, it's more the energy imprint of those people at the moment that they died. Right. So yeah. that's that's actually an energy imprint of a living person. Mm. I mean, here in the UK, not, obviously, not a, not a ghost. Compared, yeah. compared to uh, the United States, where mm. we've got many, many more old... I mean, in London, for example, you've got, you know, all sorts of haunted places, you know, old pubs right. down by the river, yep. you know, that used to be places where people were, 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 mm. were murdered or hanged or punished or something like that. I mean... By, by definition, I suppose you would say there are more ghosts in those kinds of places, in older places, than in newer places. Oh, I would think so, because you've got, you know, layers and layers of history, and especially if it's violent history, you know, which we, we all have that. The United States is younger, obviously, so we don't have as much violent history, but we do have a violent history, mm. and that's usually where these things come from. Um, I also, just I found a, a, a place, a hotel in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that seems to be a problem for baseball teams. Oh uh, yes, uh, they they all have to they all have to stay at the uh, the Fister Hotel, which is on the uh, it's the top ten most haunted hotel in the country, hmm. and uh, hmm. they report having the same things as as your guy that we're talking about. They report similar kind of things and refuse to stay. Hmm. So there again, the whole team stays, and two or three people have you know an experience and go running out and don't ever want to go back. Yeah, that's that's amazing. It must be the individual there. Do we need educating about uh, ghosts, Bonnie? Because I've never understood why people are frightened of ghosts. I mean, I've never seen a ghost, but if I did, my attitude would be, well, hang on, you can't touch a ghost because it's not of a physical nature. It's, uh, you know, it's an apparition. Uh, I've never heard of a ghost doing any harm to anybody. Their mere presence shouldn't be frightening because they... You know, I'm not. I'm they not, might look frightening. Well, well, it's an apparition, isn't it? A ghost. What I'm saying, yeah, really. They, they so, don't don't, usually, I mean, they don't usually look frightening. You know, why? Why would they? You know, if they want to communicate with you, they're not going to try and scare you. Exactly. That's what they're I mean. Scared because it's something you're not familiar with. Yeah, that's what I mean. So, don't we need education about this? Because ghosts have a bad name, whereas in fact, 
the, the, we could be taught that if there's a ghost ab about, it's about for a reason. And that reason is to warn you, because we read many, many stories about people saying, do you know, I saw the ghost of my father the minute before I didn't step off the pavement onto the road and would have been killed by a runaway lorry or something like that. You know what I mean? If ghosts... Oh, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And, you know, there's as many reasons why these things happen as there are people. Yeah. Yeah, as I say, ghosts are people too. They're just people that that don't have physical bodies anymore. Can yeah. you make yourself more... they still more have their emotions, they still have their personalities. Mm. If they were a practical joker when they were alive, then, yeah, they might, you know, play practical jokes on you. Mm. Can, can, you, make your, can, you, make, can you make yourself more receptive to seeing a ghost, mm. Bolly? I mean, I don't know in your work whether you talk to people who want to see a ghost, mm. maybe of a, of a former relative or something like that. Can you make yourself more available to see ghosts, if you know what I mean? Well, you, you can get yourself, you know, as you were saying, you can put yourself in locations where there's been reported sightings by other people mm. and see if, you know, you see something in a similar situation. But really it's just a matter of, of being open-minded and open to life experience in general. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of mysterious things that happen around us that we don't have an explanation for. Mm. That's no, very agree. true. I agree. Certainly on this show. Bolly, thank you very much yeah. indeed. Thanks, Bolly. Uh, Bolly Vent there, psychic detective mm. and a medium uh, and TV personality. Absolutely. You know, I was hoping, I wait for you to mention the ghost Ros Jason story that you talked about. Uh, well, I mean, that, that was a bit ridiculous. This is women who think they are actually having sex with a ghost. Yeah. They believe that, you well, know. Why didn't you ask me about that? Well, because I, I think that was something that Bonnie, who is, you know, a very serious psychic detective, um, I don't think she would have uh, appreciated me trying to turn it into some sort of titillating. Uh -huh. Sexual story, really? You know? No, I don't think she was very respectful. I did to her. want to tell her my famous ghost story, which I've told the the listeners a few times. No, I'm not going to tell the one about the Highlands. Yeah, it, it, no, it, don't tell yeah. that one again. The guy comes in no, through the door downstairs. No, told about a he million goes times. upstairs yeah. with his wet bag. Yeah, he never comes downstairs. Yeah. Right, and they never see him again. Yeah, but that's their story, isn't it? But you that's have, that's a, not your story. That's a very good mate of ours, Peter Keswick, yeah, yeah. who made a substantial Peter Myers, Peter Myers from Keswick. Sorry, yeah, who made a substantial living in America through being a good businessman. He's not a Nutter, and he, he says was. it happened to him. Yeah, he was in a, the bothy no, rubbish. Have you during a wild storm. Have you never heard of a shaggy in, dog story in the Highlands? Yeah, but he's obviously he's always bought you and and and, re, re, reeled and the man you in. and the kilt knocked on the door. Yeah, Can I come in and shelter from the storm? But he's reeled you in and made you believe the story. He went upstairs. Yeah, we've already heard the story, and he never came down. Yeah, I wish you'd go upstairs and never come and there down. There was no other way out of the bothy yeah, that well, night. Yeah, so as the storm raged. In the Highlands. For sake. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. the two mics, the Porky quiz coming up in the next hour. Fascinating conversation that with uh, what you described as a very serious yes. psychic detective. Well, I think, yeah, I think well, your first question serious. to her might have actually got to the core of it. Some people have brains that are wired yeah. to be aware of the presence of ghosts. Exactly. In a situation, yeah. and others I'm like me. You've never seen one. No, I haven't. I haven't. Because you're quite superstitious. I'm quite superstitious, but I, I always say, look, ghosts don't exist to me. But I, I can accept they exist to other people. I mean, have you ever had a dream, for example, where you imagine somebody uh, from your past, you know, not a past life, but say some relative of yours that's no longer alive yeah. is talking to you? No, which could be similarly no, no. Uh, sort of broken down as a ghostly apparition. No, I've, n I've never had a dream where I've seen the face of my father talking to me and giving me advice in right. a hard situation, something like that. Yeah. However, I dream all the time about being out with my dad in his Morris Minor. Right. Could that um, not be considered a sort of a, a ghostly appearance, though, in your dream, even though it's not necessarily you're know. looking at it? I don't know. I don't know. You should it's, have asked her about that. Uh, well, yeah, maybe, uh, but, I mean, I didn't regard that as a sort of ghostly. That's just dreaming. Well, I wonder if it is, though. Well, maybe it is. I don't know. Maybe it is. Listen, that song we just played, right? Yeah. That was uh, Metal Guru. Metal Guru. Mark Bowler. Is it you? Do you know, a guy has written an amazing book. It's called Death Drive. Uh -huh. There are no accidents. Right. Um, uh, this guy... Um, 
uh, is called Stephen Bailey, uh-huh. and he's written this book because he is fascinated by the number of famous people who've died in car crashes oh, right. and for needless reasons. And his start- suggestion being that actually they may not have been accidents. No, they are accidents, but the absurdity of people dying in car accidents, and he highlights it. Like, for instance, Jane Mansfield died on June the 29th, 1967, when her Buick rammed into the back of a large truck. A what? Her Buick. A Buick? Yeah. That's what I thought you said. The crash also killed a driver, her lover Sam Brody, and four Chichuaha's uh, dogs, right? Right. C- contrary to popular belief, she wasn't decapitated. Mm. That myth arose because her blonde wig was found some distance from her body. Oh, dear. But her skull was, however, crushed as a Buick ploughed beneath the truck. After the accident, US Traffic Safety Administration decreed that all trucks should be fitted with rear-mounted protective bars to prevent cars submarining in this way. Submarining, yeah. Yeah, those bars now appear on lorries all over the world and have done ever since oh, yeah. because of the death of Jay Mansfield. Well, because you can't go under them anymore. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Well, but, in the same way that sports cars now and, and open-top yeah. cars have got, you know, um, reinforced headrests, haven't they? Yes. So that if the car flips over, you can't just go completely flat on the ground. That's right. So, so what it says is that Jane Mansfield, who is known for her big breasts but small talent, uh, <laughs> is in fact is in fact now in in sort of traffic circles and all that known as the woman who's prevented thousands of people dying um, ever since. Well, well, that's good. Even though she did. Well, she must be very grateful for not being known for something other than having large breasts. Yeah, exactly. The philosopher Albert Camus. Well, once... I didn't think she was such a bad actress. I've never seen a film she Have was in. Not? I don't think. No, 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 I don't think so. She liked Diana Dawes, wasn't she? Sort well, of the American little, version well, of Dinah Dawes. She was a little bit better than Dinah Dawes. Was she? That's a bit harsh. Anyway, Albert Camus, a philosopher. One Who? Three, Albert Camus. <laughs> <laughs> no, C-A-M-U-S. What, the, the broke that wrote the, the plaque. That guy. Uh, uh, did he? The plaque. The, what the you, plague. Is, it, is that a joke? Albert Camus, you mean? Oh, Camus, is it? Right, Albert Camus, Albert right? Albert Camus. OK, he's a, he's a philosopher anyway. Brother of the famous Seamus Camus. Seamus Camus. He said once that there is nothing more absurd than to die in a car accident. You know, mm. they are completely um, preventable. Right. He was killed well, he didn't in... He not have ni- that many cars around when he was, when he was, uh, he, uh, when he was there. He was killed in 1960 when his car hit a tree at 80 miles an hour. Camus didn't even like cars. He said they frightened Camus. me. Camus. I don't travel in them very often, but the one time he did, yeah. somebody drove it into a tree and killed yeah. him. Well, they didn't have very good safety in those days. Mark Boland apparently famously said yeah. that he had a premonition that he was going to die in a car crash, well, which is why he never learned to drive. Yeah, well, well, he, he's in the book as well. He died. Well, of he's when, in the book. He died when his girlfriend, right, uh, was driving a mini yes, through Barnes. Because he couldn't drive. And they hit a sycamore tree. Yes. Uh, it killed the glam rocker Mark Boland. Oh, it was a horse chestnut took the life of Playboy. <laughs> hey, What difference does it make? Was it a tree? Well, it, it does. Porfirio Rubriosa. <laughs> Uh, you know, that? I don't know. The tool manager. He's a, no, he's a playboy. Porfirio Rubriosa. I thought that was a kind of tree. tree. Trees can be cruel. Um, it, it also. What difference does it make? What sort of tree you hit? No, this is incredible. Now, did you know uh, James Dean? Yes. He died in 1955. And we talked about him as a mass rogerizer. He is a mass rogerizer, but, but he, he died. Now, he didn't hit a tree, did he? N- no, it said his Porsche collided head on with a clunker. What's a clunker? A clunker. A clunker. That was, was that dr- a kind of tree? No, it was a clunker. Sure. It, I don't think it is a tree because it, it, the clunker was being driven by a man named <laughs> Donald. <laughs> you won't believe this. This is incredible. It's incredible. What are you laughing at? No, seriously. Seriously. So the, the, the clunker can't be a tree. It's no. some sort of a vehicle. Isn't it some kind of old banger? No, is well, that what it means? Yeah, but this is the most amazing fact in yeah, the book. OK. Do you know what the name of the driver who was driving the clunker? I don't know, Mr Wood? No. The name of the driver who was driving the clunker, yeah. which collided with James Dean's car, therefore yeah. killing James Dean, yes. the driver's name was Donald Turn Up Speed. No, it was not. It was. Absolute rubbish. It was. His name was... Turn Up Speed. Turn Up Speed. Rubbish. His name was Turn Up Donald Turn Up Speed. T-U-R-N-U-P. S double E D. That was his name. So not spelt any differently from three words being put together. No, then. his name was Donald Turnup Speed. Rubbish. And he was he was the what driver. Of no, it's not. I don't believe it. It's not. It's not. Has he got Princess Diana in there? Don't be ridiculous. No, why he not? hasn't. What do you mean, don't be ridiculous? It's about famous people who've died in car crashes. Yeah, all right, well, I haven't got round well, to that yet. Why would it be ridiculous if she was in the book? Hang on, James Dean had only recently <laughs> completed a. Prim- what, what's your problem? I'd only recently prom- uh, finished a promotional film about road safety, right. which he'd done for free, mm. right? Yeah. And it concluded with the line, remember, 
the life you save might be mine. Yeah. Well, he should have been... But then he got killed in a car blo- crash. The bloke in the clunker, shouldn't he? In truth, no one could save Dean from his own dangerous driving, mm. yet the banal Mr Turnup Speed survived the Are crash. Are you sure it's not Turnup Seed? No, something? it's Turnup... Oh, Turnup Seed it is. Sorry, yeah, yeah, Turnup Seed. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, you're right. T U R N U P S W D. Turnip seed, yeah. Turnip yeah. seed. Yeah, turnip well, as seed. in turnip seed. Yeah, turnip seed. Turnip yeah. seed. Turnip, uh, turnip seed, yeah. But yeah. It, it looks like turnip speed when you first look at it, okay? I suppose, yeah, if you're not reading it yeah. properly. I know. Well, yeah. I want to know what it says about Diana. Uh, I'll get around to that in a minute. All right. Now, the celebrities that feature in this book compete with one another in the pursuit of meaningless demise. Right. For instance, the heartthrob rock star Eddie Cochran. Eddie Cochran, yeah. Yeah, he perished, right? In a dreary 1959 Ford console, mm. not on somewhere glamorous like Sunset Boulevard, yeah. but on a dull stretch of the A4 in Wiltshire Fair in enough. 1960. Yeah. Did you know that? I didn't know I that. I did. I did. No, I don't think I do did. You know, do you know how I knew it? How do you know? Because it's near Marlborough. I once read a letter in a motoring magazine yeah. from a man who said, you know, in 1960 I was a uh, probationary constable uh-huh. attached to the Wiltshire you know, police force yeah. at uh, Malmesbury or somewhere like okay. that. He said, on my first day I was called out to a road crash mm. to assist with clearing the road of debris. Yeah. And the man who was dead in the car was Eddie Cochran. Oh, there you go. How about that? Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Um, might have been outside devices, actually, because the big constabulary is in devices. Is it? Yeah, yeah. It is okay. now. It might not have been then. Now, do you remember Mike Harewood? Mike Harewood. Greatest motorcycle champion we ever had. No. He, he, oh, Mike Harewood was the first great motorcycle champion, long time before Barry Sheen. Oh, yeah. And he also was the only man ever to have won the World Motor Racing Championship mm. and become a Formula One racing driver and won the, fur, the, the World Formula One racing uh-huh. show. He died in a car crash. Did he? Yeah. He died. And, and guess what he was doing when he died in the car crash? Driving. You're, obviously, he was driving. But guess where he'd been? Um, I don't know. Wiltshire? No, he'd been to get his fish and chips at the shop round well, the how corner. How I guess that? Well, I know you couldn't. No, that how was in 1981. Yeah. Well, he was probably going too quick. Oh, no, hang he? on. Sorry, sorry, that's wrong. <laughs> no, sorry. Mike Harewood. Oh, yeah. No, he was... He, no, his Jaguar hit a tree. Right. The Jaguar hit a tree. What sort of tree? I don't know. I don't know what sort of tree that was. Um, the trees do figure prominently in this book. Dear God. Yeah, ash trees, sycamore trees. I mean, yeah. It's amazing the number of people who... who Giant uh, redwoods. Eh? Giant redwoods. Yeah. Anybody crash into one of them? I well, tell what you, does it say about Princess Diana? Well, I haven't got down there yet. I haven't read that far into it. All right. uh, hang on. Uh, uh, here we go. Um, the socialite and heir to the Guinness fortune, Tara Brown. Right? That was uh, a bloke. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tara's a woman's name. No, it's, uh, this guy was a bloke. All right. And uh, what happened to him? He'd probably be forgotten today if not for the Beatles song A Day in the Life. Ah. He was the man whose car crash prompted John Lennon to write the line he blew his mind out in a car ah. when he read the report of his demise in a newspaper. Oh, I thought that was about somebody shooting himself. No, 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 no. That was a car crash. Oh, I didn't know that. No, no, I no. I thought no. that line was about somebody shooting, his, you know, shooting himself in the head. No, he blew his mind out in a car. It was a car crash. Ah, he went through... Interesting stuff. All right, well, yeah. hold that thought because I still Indeed. want to find out what else is in that book as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this is Talk Sport. Here you go. Well, we are the two mics. Coming up in the next hour, it's the Porky quiz on the American Civil War, of course. Once, uh, once Porky's finished... What? What's the problem? <laughs> once you've finished pouring over this book about people yeah. dying in car crashes... Yeah, well, that's right. Um, here's one from Alan in Bristol, right? Mm. Texted into 81089. A passenger who survived in James Dean's car yeah. himself died in a car crash in Germany a few years later. Is that right? Uh, and that's terrible. Uh, uh, one from someone who doesn't give a name. Mm. Uh, Porky's talking tripe again. The mm. only man to be world motorbike champ and world Formula mm. One champ is John Surtees. John Surtees, that's Hashtag the one. But Mike Harewood was very good. Well, I'm sure he yeah, was. He was, yeah. But no, he wasn't he was. so good at his, uh, coming back from the fish and chip shop, was no, he? No, he wasn't. No, um, he was actually bringing his fish and chips back. I've, 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 maybe he was had it on his lap. But he, I've confirmed that now. you must remember as well that in those mm. days, in many of these you know, car crashes that you're talking about, yes. the, the road safety uh, techniques were ridiculous. I mean, well, there were no seat belts. Cars were very powerful and fast. You know what and, it says? And the roads themselves were probably not even very well put together. It, it, do you know what it says here? You're mm. absolutely uh, true. The problem was, people like James Dean yeah. in those days, there were photographers following around all the time, much as they do now. Yeah. But, you know, they if they got a picture of James Dean, it was so worldwide famous on the front page of every paper and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it says, 
consequently, people like James Dean would never be seen fastening their seatbelt, checking their mirrors. Well, a lot of them didn't have seatbelts. Yeah, well, ex- exactly, or, or, or in any way trying... You know, cars were still very glamorous in those days because yeah. there weren't a lot of them about, as you yeah. quite rightly say. Yeah, exactly. So the last thing you were going to do was, you know, sort of wrap yourself up in a, in a, you know, a seatbelt and check that yeah. the, uh, the petrol levels are all right. People just got in the cars and drove. Yeah, exactly. Now, a couple of people are saying that uh, where Eddie Cochran died was a place called Rowden Hill in Chippenham. Oh, right. Uh, there Basil you go. de Montague says that. Uh, and also yeah. um, somebody on Martin says that as well. Yeah. So it was definitely on, uh, on Bath Road in Chippenham, somewhere yeah. near there anyway. And Ed says, you might want to check the facts on this. I'm not quite sure why you would send a tweet in and say this might not be right. Go on. But it might not be. He says uh, the story he's heard is a policeman who found Eddie Cochran ended up taking his guitar, learning it, and playing with someone like Hank Marvin. It was true. Is that but, true? D- d- you know, funny enough, I read this letter years ago, and I thought, how interesting. Mm. He did. He... he I think he took the guitar out of the boot of the car, believe it or not, took it back to the police station, right. started twanging around on it, yeah. and did end up playing in a group. Really? Yeah, it was... An, but not the shadows, though. I think he might have been. Really? I think he might have been in the shadows for a while. Yeah, I, th- I think that was the story. It was It was a remarkable story. Yeah. Um, what about this for the most tragic one any, uh, ever? Yeah. Isadora Duncan. Yeah, yeah. Di- uh, she, got, she got throttled by the scarf, didn't she? You're absolutely right, yeah. yeah. Did you know that? I Isadora did, yeah. Duncan died in 1927 when her long silk scarf caught in the spokes of an Amilcar CGSS, one of yeah. the most glamorous models on the road at the time, right. instantly strangling her car... Uh, strangling her. Mm. The car and scarf were the height of fashion... Uh, affectations can be dangerous. Yeah. Gertrude Stein what, I'll remarked I'll you, I'll after the crash. Yeah, I'll tell you why I knew that, because my yeah. mother at one point in her life had, a, had a, an open-top MG midget. Right, yeah. And she used to quite often wear a scarf. I see. And my father would always say to her, if she set off, you know, mm. make sure you don't do an Isadora Duncan. That's right, On your yeah. way down to Harrods. Yeah. I, I, I remember years ago a terrible story mm. about a, a girl who got married in Blackpool, right? Right. And I they, you got time for they, this, they, they were bikers. And her wedding dress got caught in the uh, the gear shaft, and uh, she lost her leg. Terrible story. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. Drive with Adrian Durham and Darren Goff. High performance football comments. That's never middle at road. Roads. Where we're going, we don't need roads. Scattered on sports talk and explosive opinion. That'd be great. Just really winds me up. Absolutely unbelievable. I don't like listening to him. I'll turn off. He's an idiot. Adrian Durham. What an absolute. I love the smell of football in the afternoon. Drive time radio, where ginger is the new black. Apocalypse football. Drive with Adrian Durham and Darren Goff. This afternoon from four. Goffy don't surf. On Talk Sport. This is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on as well. Uh, we might have some good news on the podcast front, actually, which oh, yeah. we'll be imparting to you a little bit later on. Yes. Uh, uh, Paul in Taps Well says this. Morning, the two mics. The Manic Street preachers are from Blackwood mm-hmm. and not from Cardiff. Well, we didn't say they were from Cardiff. Well, but where, where's, where's Blackwood? Actually, uh, well, it's sort of the outskirts of, uh, of that sort of neck of the woods. I, well, I, I know, actually used difference? to see James Dean Bradfield used to drink in a bar. In uh, uh, just off uh, St Mary Street, I yep. used to see him in this pub quite regularly. Who did? James Dean Bradfield is the lead singer of Manic Street Preacher. Is he? And I saw them in the CIA, as it's called, the, the Cardiff International Arena. Oh, uh, CIA! There. I know what that is. Yeah, do you? Yeah, it's that is far. behind the Marriott. Uh, it is behind the yes. Marriott. Quite right. Yes. yes. Uh, a couple of other uh, people mm. have uh, have, have, compa- have, uh, have confirmed that story that we were talking about earlier on. Yeah. Uh, Darren in Abergavenny uh, yeah. says this car crash radio by Porky Parry, which mm-hmm. is quite funny. Thank you. Um, but David in Knotts and also Paul in Hockley, Birmingham. Mm. Uh, uh, said that uh, the first police officer on the scene mm. when Eddie Cochran died was the future singer of uh, uh, the band Dave D. That's Dozy, right. Beaky, it was, yeah. it was, it was Dave D. Dave what a D. bizarre coincidence. Amazing, absolutely amazing. There mm. was some karma going on there, wasn't there? Karma. Yeah. I like ab- it. Yeah, ab- Very good. Ab- absolutely. Um, now, I'll tell you what I need to talk to you about. I want to talk to you about uh, a number of important have you issues. Found, by the way, have you found old uh, Princess Diana? In no, I haven't pocket? got that far down. Oh, right. I haven't got that far down. Is it done in sort of um, a chronological order? Uh, no, it's it really it's talking about you know the um, the iniquities of dying in a car crash. I suppose they, I suppose we all know enough about the diner one. I don't know if that'll be included or not. Well, you would think so. Yeah. Abs- now absolutely. a lot of people are making reference to you pronouncing Chihuahua wrong. I didn't even know you, you said Chihuahua. Yeah, Chihuahua. 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 Steve says. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, uh, the Chihuahua were the dogs that were killed in the uh, crash with uh, Jay Mansfield. Yeah. yeah. Oh, OK, so yeah. Chihuahua in the car. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. Oh, OK, right. Ab- Absolutely. Um, Cy si says this, how can Mike Perry get what? all these stories so wrong when what he's reading them out of a book? What do you mean? Well, I'm, you I'm do... not, no, I'm not. I, I, I don't read them out of a book. 
I what I do is I read books, right, um, yeah. religiously, right, and then I analyse the content of the book, and then I convey that knowledge and that information to our millions of listeners. Uh-huh. Okay, uh, okay. Do you ever remember going on a um, a donkey on the beach when you were a kid? Um, uh, you know what? I used to go on them in, uh, in, in uh, there was they used to have them at the top of the heath, I think, when I was a kid. Well, top of Hampstead Heath. Really? Yeah. Donkeys. You used to take a little donkey They're ride. They're more up traditionally there, yeah. on a beach, really, aren't well, they? Well, they are. Yeah, but I don't remember going on them in the beach so much yeah. as, as going on them on the top of the heath. Do you know they're, they're going to ban all donkeys on beaches? Yeah, I'm not surprised really because Why? they don't often look as if they're terribly well looked after, do they? Well, I see. I, I I'm not sure. I agree. I mean, I must admit, my image of a, a donkey on the beach at yeah. Blackpool is a mangy, flea bitten yeah, I mean. animal yeah. that looks like it, you know, needs to be put down. Yeah. And they don't and, smell and, very good uh, either. They, they don't smell very good and that kind of stuff. But apparently, is there's it's, it's an, there's an outrage because one of the most famous um, places is Paynton in Devon. Ah, yes. Now, these donkeys in Paynton in Devon mm. are not just beach donkeys. No. They come from a donkey sanctuary. Oh, yeah. So they're very well looked after, okay. you see what I mean? Right. But the strangest but thing... But I'm surprised that people running a donkey sanctuary would think that that's a good use for them. Shouldn't a donkey sanctuary person think that they should just be able to wander freely in the no, fields? No, because if you can usefully employ an animal, it, it helps its mental uh, well-being. Well, it's self-esteem. Yeah, self-esteem. And well, it, I'm and, not sure and, about and, that. Yeah, it does. No, it, do, it does. I'm not, I'm not convinced. A- anyway, anyway, um, what they doing down in Paynton, which is covered by the uh, council called Tor Bay. Yeah. So that's Torquay as well, I suppose. Well, it, it would be, yeah. Tor Bay Council, yeah. yeah. English Riviera. Has yeah. Faulty they've, they've said they're taking out, they are taking out yeah. the donkey rides on Paynton Beach and they're going to replace them, uh, amazingly this to me, because I thought this was more dangerous, with trampolines. Oh, yeah. Now, I thought there was a... I thought there was a... Trampolines? Yeah. Oh, I thought I thought there was a movement underway to ban all tra- trampolines because people keep breaking legs and all this kind of stuff on them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, I mean, people do get injured, but, I mean, it depends on how the trampoline is set up as well. Yeah. If they, I mean, they used to have them years ago on the beach, didn't they? They would have, like, a sort of a big flat surface and they'd have five or six of them, and they wouldn't be the big ones. Trampolines? Yeah, not the ones that... Not the ones that you see now, which are sort of inside netting. No. But these, trampo- these were just open trampolines. Yeah, trampolines are only safe if you dig a pit and sink the trampoline in it, so mm. it's the same well, level as they, the beach. Well, this is what they is were. what they do? Well, this is what they used to yeah. do, but I don't know what they do now. I'll tell you what I noticed when we had yes. that big storm not that long ago. Right. That there was loads of trampolines blown all over the place. I mean, yeah. there was one in my street that was just blown across the street. Yes. You know, because so many people have now got them in what, their back What, a trampoline garden. blown across the yeah, street? Yeah, because so many of them Dangerous. are in people's back gardens, but they're not properly anchored. Yes. And they're quite big and heavy. I told you, mine blew away. Uh, down in uh, down in Sussex, uh, yeah. even though it was actually complete properly anchored, but there was one very bad storm last sort of November. Blew away across the field or something. It blew across the hedge and into the next field. Yeah, that's terrible. Did yeah. you go chasing it and, re- and recover? Well, I wasn't it there when it happened, yeah. but yeah. I, I had to bring it back. Yeah, yeah, I must I must admit I don't know if I've got a lot of sympathy for the uh, the donkey situation. I'm I, I'm a bit like you really. I, they, they they look a bit mangy. Yeah. And, and you wonder where they're kept overnight and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you know and what also I mean? just walking up and down the same stretch of beach with a different child on the back. Yeah. I don't I don't think that's a particularly great thing for them to be doing. Well, they, you know, they um, apparently they do. All animals, and including, like, sniffer dogs and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. By the way, a police car rolled past me on the way in tonight. Yeah. And it, it said on the back, police, and then dog section. Dog section, yeah. Right, now, where would that be going off to? Well, I mean, I suppose... To a crime. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the dog section police do. I don't know whether they're only allowed to do things with their dogs, but maybe they're the closest... If they're the closest um, emergency service vehicle yeah, to some maybe, crime, yeah. they have to go regardless usually, of the uh, dogs. Usually dogs are used to track, aren't they? Like tracker dogs? Well, either that or maybe just to search places or, yeah, you know, to, to do a bit of sniffing. Maybe. But yeah, maybe, yeah, but maybe, yeah. uh, maybe yeah. as I say, if, if you happen to be in a, in a police dog unit you and you're nearest to some act, some scene of well, crime, that's true. That's you, true. You, have, you can't just pretend you're not a police officer. No, you? no, I suppose, I suppose yeah. you can't. I suppose now, you how can't. about this one from Mick in yeah, Spokane on. Yeah. Uh, on the ghost front? He says, I lived in a flat on Cold Harbour Lane. Uh, stuff would go missing over a period of time and then yeah. it all show up again within minutes. Cold Harbour Lane's in Brixton. It is, yeah. It, it was. I, I did the Brixton riots down mm. there, by the way, at the mm. height of the... Uh, 1981. 1981. There were yeah. riots everywhere in this country. There were. I did riots in Brixton, I remember living Manchester, in Bath at the time. Liverpool. I did Toxteth. Yeah. I did Moss Side. Yeah. I did... Bri- I was the riot king. Were you? I was the riot king. King of the riots. I was, honestly, really? yeah. Everywhere there was a riot, I got sent. How did you get there to, simultaneously to all of them, then? Well, I didn't. They were all on different nights and different yeah. weeks. Okay. But I was I was known as the fearless, most fearless reporter in the country. <laughs> I would go... I. I I'd of course walk, you were. I'd walk into riots. Yeah. You know, where other people would flee. St Paul's in Bristol. No, I didn't go to St Paul's, Why no. Not? 
Uh, maybe I don't some know. of the worst riots. Well, maybe they were, but I, I, on in the Toxteth riot, yeah. I very, very nearly got crushed by a blazing concrete uh, mixer, a blazing which was pushed down the mixer. hill by the rioters right. uh, in Toxteth, Mount Pleasant, just behind the Adelphi Hotel, yeah. and I just leapt out the way at the last well, moment. Well, they aiming at you. Well, they're aiming at the people at the bottom of the hill, and I was at the bottom of the hill, yeah. OK? Right, OK. And, um, maybe you should have been at the top of the hill. Uh, well, the rioters were at the top of the yeah. hill, so I, I didn't I mean. fancy that because they were chucking petrol bombs yeah. at people. Well, I, remember, I was living in Bath at the time, yeah. and Bath, of course, yeah. was this very sedate, lovely yeah. sort of, you know, middle-class city. Yes. And I was at university at the mm. time. Well, I think we just mm. left university, and we were hoping that there would be riots there, yeah. but they never came. Yeah, is that right? Yeah. There, was a, there was one guy at Toxas, I remember, and he worked for The Guardian, yeah. and he, he, was, he was a gentleman reporter. Uh-huh. Now, we'd been there two nights of riots already, you yeah. see, and, and uh, you know, the city was blackened with smoke and all mm. this kind of stuff, yeah. and we were rec- Climbing in the bar in the uh, basement of the um, of the what hotel. hotel? Which hotel would you be uh, in for uh, Toxteth? Uh, uh, I've just told you. I've just I just mentioned it. The Adelphi. Oh, right, the Adelphi, okay. which was right at the bottom of the road that led to Toxteth, yeah. right? You know, right uh, just on Lime Street there. And so uh, so we were on about to go out for our third night, and he suddenly arrives. This mm. guy from London, you know, his Guardian guy, and he wasn't very world wise. So the problem we always had was getting up to the scene of the right and back because taxis were no longer taking you up there. You yeah, see that's what I mean? Yeah. So it was all of a long walk, yeah. you know. So anyway, he arrived and, and we said, yeah, and we told him what had been going on. He said, oh, great. He said, well, can I come out with you tonight then, chaps? Hmm. We said, yes, certainly. I said, we said, uh, have you got a car? Right. He said, oh, yes, yes. I said, oh, good. I said, well, look, would you mind being driver tonight? Because, yeah. you know, we drove... We've been in the pub for five hours. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and he said, yes. He said, is it safe? Mm. I said, oh, it's very safe. I said, uh, I said they, they don't attack cars. I said, it's just buildings. Don't worry about that, you know. Yeah. Oh, OK, chaps, yes, OK. Well, so, come on, let's go then. So we get into his car, right. he's driving. What sort of car did he have? Uh, you know, like an average car, like a sort of, you know, Ford Mondeo yeah. or something okay. like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. It wasn't, wasn't a brilliant car. Anyway, so um, we got halfway up the hill, and a lot of people walking around throwing petrol bombs and things. We mm. said, no, we'll go further, go mm. further. Anyway, to cut a long story short, we got right to the heart of the riot. Yeah. We said, right, we better get out here, you know. And his car burst into flames. <laughs> 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 about three minutes later, seriously. Well, unfortunately, you no. all got out of it. Right? Yeah, uh, I'm not joking. A petrol bomb <laughs> landed underneath it, you right. know, and he was looking at it and saying, no, he said, don't worry, it'll be all right. It'll just p- fern itself out. Yeah. And then, bang, <laughs> boom, his car blew up in front of us all. You can imagine oh. him on the phone to the office. Oh, I mean, do you know what? He plagued me for the next yeah. 18 months trying to get a statement out of me for his insurance people, right. saying, you were witness. I said, no, I didn't say it blow up. I'm sorry. Dear God, <laughs> terrible. <laughs> I'll tell you a funny story about the LA riots coming up in a bit. Uh, this is Talk Sport. We are the two mics. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. I'm rooting to riot. I'm rooting to riot. I'm rooting to riot. I'm rooting to riot. Timely song that, but uh, it's not actually about riots this time. It's about predictor. So What's that? Oh, I see. Predictor yeah, yeah. riot. Right, but I'll okay. tell you the LA story in a bit. But let's do the right. old uh, predictor first of all, because we've got a lot of games coming up this weekend, yeah. uh, including uh, a couple of live talk sport commentary indeed, games. Indeed, uh, Chelsea, Manchester City, and Leicester against West Ham. Yeah, we've got a lot of Leicester games actually, haven't we? Which is quite fortuitous. Yeah. Right, first game up is Saturday, twelve uh, forty-five kickoff. Norwich against Sunderland. Yeah, Norwich Sunderland. Uh, what a vital relegation battle that is. Got to go with Norwich on home territory, although Sunderland have fought the good fight and don't seem to be able to actually get over the precipice there. Norwich 2, Sunderland 0. I've got Norwich 2, Sunderland 1. Yeah, I don't think yeah. Sam Allardyce is going to make it this time, as no. I said on the no. winners and losers yeah. earlier. Everton against Southampton is the next one. Up yeah, it is. Clock. Yeah, and I'm going to make that uh, Everton 1, Southampton 0. Southampton a very good team. Everton have got to get themselves in the mood for the um, Cup semi-final the following week. I'm going to say Everton 1, Southampton 2. Mm. I'm going to say it's going to be an away win. Mm. Manchester United get a break. They play in Aston Villa. Yeah, that's right. Man, U- up. Man United 3, Villa 0. Yeah, Man United 2, Aston Villa 0, I say. Right. Uh, Newcastle United against Swansea. Yeah. I don't I don't see any hope for Newcastle Has Rafa at won all. a game yet? No, he's drawn He's uh, drawn one, lost two. Mm. Is it drawn I'm, one, I'm, lost I'm three? I'm going to say he's going to win this one. I'm going to say 2-0 to, uh, to Newcastle. OK, I think you may be right there, so I'm going to say 1-0 to Newcastle. All right, West Brom against Watford. Yeah, West Brom, Watford. Yeah. The possible finalists of the FA Cup. 
Watford are possible finalists. I'm going to say that's going to be 2-2, to be honest. All right, I'm going to go 1-1, one, one, I think. OK. Uh, next yeah. game up is Chelsea against Manchester City, which is the live talk sport commentary game. Indeed. 5.30 kick-up on Saturday. Yeah, 5.30 kick-up on Saturday. I think City have, you know, been reinvigorated by the European adventure. So, that's, to, to, for me, that's Chelsea 1, Manchester City 3. OK, I'm going to go 2-2 for that one. OK. Uh, and then Sunday, first game, one thirty, Bournemouth against Liverpool. Yes. Sunday, Bournemouth. I see Liverpool are reinvigorated It's a kind of meaningless well. game, this, though, really, isn't well, it? Well, it is, but I'm going to say Bournemouth 1, Liverpool 2. Uh, OK, I'm going to go... Uh, They'll live say? on the energy of the European um, adventure. Bournemouth haven't been very good, I have to say, lately, mm. have they? So I'm going to do the same, one, the two ones of Liverpool. OK. Uh, Leicester against West Ham. This will yeah. be another one which is tough yeah. for Leicester. Yeah, it is, um, yeah. But they've got some wiggle room, haven't they? I mean, even if they lose a game, well, they're not. It's not like they're going to lose the title. They're just a very good team mm. who, who who are aware of their strengths and use them well. Leicester two, West Ham nil. Uh, I'm going to go two one. Mm. I think. Yeah, mm. I think you're right there. Mm. Uh, Arsenal against Crystal Palace. Yeah, it's got to be an Arsenal victory, three one. Yeah, we'd think so, wouldn't you? Yeah. Um, okay, that's. Uh, that's I'm going to say two nil for that one. Okay. Uh, and then the last game that we're going to do for this week, even though there's some games midweek next week, yes. and we'll do those maybe on Monday. Yes. Uh, Stoke against Tottenham. Yeah, Stoke Tottenham. Uh, I think Tottenham are a very very good team. Stoke a bit erratic. Stoke nil Tottenham two. Okay, I'm going to go Stoke one Tottenham two. Okay. And what about your um, your chips? You have a, a, a yes. chip for the most certain game that you're going to you're going to uh, you're going to win. And that's uh, that's, that's th- just going to be as the Aston Villa game every week, isn't it? It is. Yeah, Manchester. United and Aston Villa, so I mark that. And one you're least sure about? The one the least I'm sure about is um, uh, Everton Southampton. Yeah, I'm doing yeah. Chelsea Man City as okay. my least certain. One. Okay. Mm-hmm. And I suppose, um, yeah, I suppose you kind of have to do Man United Aston Villa yeah. the most certain, don't you? Because that's about the only thing. Uh, that Absolutely. You have to worry about. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, now mm-hmm. don't forget, uh, uh, because we have to get all these predictions in before Friday. Uh, yes. At the end of Friday. Yes. So you have to fill out all the other ones anyway. Yes. Well, I've got them all here you, for you, you see. There we go. Before you submit them. There we are. Have you filled everything in? Yes. Oh, well done. Yes. Well done indeed. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. I do all of that. Yeah, you know. no, I was going to I know what I'm doing. No, I know, well, I know you know what you're doing. Mm. Uh, you're down in, you're fourth from the bottom, actually. So if there was to be three relegation places, you're currently surviving yes. in the Talk Sport Presenters League. Yeah, well, I knew I would. And I'm about four above you. I knew I would. 16. Don't worry about that. Now, uh, the story I was going to tell you about the LA riots. Oh, yes, please, uh, yeah. Which, which I wasn't involved in, but a couple right. of people that I knew went out there for them. Yes. Yeah. Um, and one particular guy, I'm going to keep yes. the names out of it, obviously, yes. to protect the innocent. Yes. One particular guy who was based in New York went out uh, and teamed up with a guy who was based in L.A. Right. And uh, he got into the guy in L.A.'s car and, and the guy yes. said, look, don't worry. He said, I know exactly where I'm going. I know where everything is. Mm. Um, I know where the best place is to park the car. We'll get some great stuff and then yes. we'll come back and we'll go out for dinner. Blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. So the guy from New York sits in the passenger seat mm-hmm. and um, for some reason or other has to get something out of the glove box, right? Mm-hmm. Goes into the glove box mm-hmm. and guess what he finds in the glove box? A gun. A gun. Yeah. 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 And he says to the guy, he says, what the hell are you doing with a gun? Mm. He said, well, we're going to a riot. You know, this is mm-hmm. America. He said, I want to, he said, have you got, he said, I've got a permit for it. He said, yeah. if somebody starts coming at me, I'm just going to shoot them. Good God. And, and and the guy from New York said, I'll tell you what, you know, yeah. just turn back now. Let's get out of the car. Mm. I don't want to have anything to do with you. Mm. And, and he, and he, and he just and was that it? And that was the end of it. Yeah, well, yeah, because this guy had gone sort of native. He'd gone mad. Yeah. Living in Los Angeles, he thought it was a great idea to drive around in the middle of a riot <laughs> with, with, a, a with, a, with a handgun. Yeah. Until somebody and, turns it on you. And he was a journalist, you mm, know. Yeah. Absolutely mm. extraordinary stuff. Yeah, well, that, that is extraordinary stuff. What I found about the riots was that you don't have time to be frightened. Yeah. I know that sounds odd, but, you know, there were well, mobs... It's a bit like being in a war zone, isn't it? There were mobs of hundreds of people rushing towards you, carrying petrol bombs and all that kind of yeah. stuff. On one occasion... Did they not turn on the journos as well, occasionally? Yeah, they did, yeah. Um, on one occasion, I remember, I think it was in Liverpool, yeah. I, I had to... Be able to fire. No, it was in Manchester actually. The the um, it was the Moss Side riots, and I had to file copy because it was half past one in the morning. Yeah. And in those days, we still had deadlines up till two thirty in yeah. the morning. And if it was one thirty in the morning there, presumably yeah. you were two or three hours ahead anyway, right? Two a couple of hours ahead. No, no, I was in Manchester for the for the Moss Side riots. Oh, Moss Side. Yeah, Moss Side. Oh, I thought you said Mount Sinai. No, 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 Moss Side. You idiot. Oh yeah, they're still on the same time as us, aren't they? Yeah, Moss Side. Yeah, yeah and I was working in I, Manchester. I, you know, I nearly went to have a look at Moss Side yeah. uh, when I was leaving Manchester because I saw a sign. I've right. never been to Moss Side. Really? No. It's it's kind of. I think they've rebuilt it a bit now, but I mean, it used to be like the drug den of the northwest yeah. of England and all that. Yeah. But anyway, the point of my story is, yeah, go on. I had to knock on this door because I had to file copy, and the woman who opened the door was so frightened she thought I was a rioter, yeah. but I had to talk her out of it. And well, say, you're not no. wearing a suit? Yeah, I was. Well, no, I don't think I was, actually, because it was about the second or third night of the riots, and I was... Uh 
uh, you know, yeah, I was in combat, combat gear and I was, my face was blackened from the burning and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so she thought well, I was a writer. Ridiculous. So, no, you know, so I had to calm her down, you know, and said, no, all I want to do is use your phone. We had no mobile phones in those days yeah. and all the phones had been trashed right. and burned. So you didn't use the old I could smell gas scenario? Well, I didn't, have to, I didn't have to. I banged on the door and, and uh, shouted that I was the police. Um, you know, I'd come to rescue her and all that kind of stuff. So I only shut the door and I you got You shouted in. you were the police? Yeah, exactly, yeah. You realise that's a defence? Yeah, of course it is, yeah, but it didn't matter at that time in the morning. Yeah. So anyway, I filed this copy and it basically said that what I'd witnessed that night was like a war zone. Yeah. Um, and in fact, I said it was watching the, you know, the wave after wave mm. after wave of rioters yeah. coming down onto the police lines, because in those days the police didn't wear riot uniforms. No, they just had the big helmets. They, they had the big helmets and a plastic shield, and that yeah. was it. And they were having to sort of, you know, bat away petrol mm. bombs and all this kind well, of stuff. Well, it was because of those riots that they yeah. came in with all the, the, the riot gear and also yeah, exactly. um, the, 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 the mesh windows for the, for the vans. I mean, everything, you know, flame-proof clothes were invented that they didn't have in those days. Lots mm. of coppers, you know, suddenly run off with their clothes burning yeah. and all that kind of stuff. Right. But anyway, the point of the story is, mm. I... I, uh, this was outside a police station on, in Moss Side that yeah. was under siege. So I wrote this piece, and then the lad back at the office in Great Anko Street, who took it down, um, put the headline on it, you know, and he, he, he said, like a scene from Zulu. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah that, was a, that was a headline, honestly, you know. Because he'd said, well, the way you were describing it in your yeah. copy, it was like that. And it was, actually. Yeah. You know, remember in Zulu when the, yeah. the Zulu warriors were coming right. off the hill? Yeah. Wave after wave after wave, right. you know, like that. Anyway. So you'd put that in your copy, obviously. No, I hadn't. Well, he'd invented that. I'd spoken to him about it, and right. I'd actually said it was... I said, it was, honestly, it was like a scene from Zulu, no, you know. Okay. And that kind so of you stuff. put the idea in his head, though. Well, I must have done, yeah. yeah. And he, uh, and, and, but I didn't think you could use that as a description of a, a no. riot because it was too emotive, you know, too, too uh, colourful. Yeah, right. So, so anyway, so, you know, the news editor of the paper, who was still in the office, Stan Blenkinsop, yeah. decided to improve my copy a bit. Yeah. And he, he put a line in at the top which said... Um, uh, 6,000 rioters descended on Moss Side Police Station yeah. last night. Like a scene from York's Drift or something. No, no, chanting, kill, 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 which wasn't in my copy right. and I hadn't actually heard or witnessed. Right. Right? Yeah. Three months later, mm. at the official inquiry <laughs> into, into the Moss Side riot, yeah. James Anderton, the chief constable mm, of, of the Greater Manchester yeah. Police was accused of being overly heavy-handed yeah. on his response to the rioters mm. using snatch squads to go yeah. out and club them, with yeah. uh, literally with batons, yeah. and drag them into the back of police vans and take them away. At the, at the uh, inquiry, mm. he held up a copy of the following morning's Daily Express yeah. with the front-page story, my name on it, by Mike Parry in right. my side, right. and said, well, as you can see, you know, my, my officers were under such threat there were 4,000 rioters outside the police yeah. station chanting, kill, kill, kill. I was then called to the inquiry to give evidence mm. about hearing all these people yeah. chanting, well, kill, kill, kill. Yeah. And I said, well, you know, I said it was very confused and there was a lot of noise about mm. buildings were burning, you yeah. know. And, but did you hear them shout, kill, kill, kill? I said... Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, you, once again, you appealed to, for the establishment. Well... well bent over and were quite happy to assist them. If I'd have said no, well, then, then that the have, news editor well, would have, have to have been sacked. Well, that would have been the truth, Because though. somebody actually put it that into, been into my story. It's called perjury. Well, no, it wasn't, because it wasn't in front of a, a court. It was a, an inquiry. Oh, OK. But I said, yes, well, I, right, I, I... Well, I, you know, I said, I think one or two people were shouting, kill, kill, kill. <laughs> Shocking. Mm. Absolutely dreadful. What a terrible journalist know, you were. Shocking, this is it? Talk Sport. Yeah. Bring the good old bugle, boys. We'll sing another song. Sing it with the spirit that will start the world along. Sing it as we used to sing it, 50,000 strong. While we were marching through Georgia. Well, we are the two mics. It is time, of course, for the Porky Quiz. And listening to that music, you'll know that it's something to do with the, uh, um, the, the deep history south. Uh, of the Deep South and, uh, and the American Civil War, yep. a subject that you requested, yep. a subject that you say you're an expert in, yes. uh, a subject that I no doubt you've been researching uh, over the last couple no of days. No need to. No need to. OK. As ever, uh, if you get one answer correct, yes. you will hear this sound. Come here! 
Yes. And if you get one wrong, you'll hear this sound. You're the worst soldier in this whole company. Now hit me! I see. Okay, ready? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now, yeah. What I would say is, having cast my eye over these questions, mm. they're all fairly scholastic questions, mm -hmm. actually. So I don't think you've got any grounds for complaint on this particular occasion. Okay. Question number one. Yeah. Uh, what was the Civil War also known as? I beg your pardon. What was the Civil War also known as? Why are you looking at me like that? A civil, the American Civil War yeah. is one of the most famous um, engagements of conflict in the history of the world. Yes. And it was known as the American Civil War. Okay. You're, right? You're not going to tell me the answer, then? Well, I, I don't know what the question is. The question is, what was it also known as? For example, uh, not that I'm giving you any kind of a clue yeah. here, yeah. you know, the First World War is known by other names, isn't the it? The Great War. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So you know, some wars have got other names. What is it also known as? The American Civil War. Yeah. I have never known it to be called anything except the Civil War. OK. So it, I'll have to the say, Americans, it's known as the Civil War. Well, I have to say that's incorrect, then. Well, in that case, I, d I don't know what the question was. Well, the You're question... the worst soldier in this whole company. Now hit me! Well, when I tell you the answer, you'll know. The, uh, the answer is the war between the states. That's well, what that's, it's also known as. That's absolutely ridiculous. That's what it's also known as. It's not also known as that. I've just got the questions here. That's the answer. Outside of America, it's known as the American Civil War. Inside America, it's known as the Civil War. Mm. Also known as the war between the states. Uh, rubbish. Question number two. Nonsense. Which act started the Civil War? Which act started the Civil War? Yeah. It was the Abolition of Slavery Act. Incorrect. No, it's not. That was yeah, 1860. No, no, hit me! Incorrect. No, what do you say uh, it was? It's the bombardment of Fort Sumter in South Carolina on April the 12th, 1861. That's not an... That wasn't an act passed in Parliament, well, you no, idiot. it's an act. It's something that happened. That's what the word act means. Right. I knew that. I absolutely knew well, that it, sta so? it started with the, the bombardment of Fort Sumter in 1861 yeah. well, I just told you that. when the Union when the Union garrison yeah. retreated to Fort Sumter mm. against the Confederate uh, troops. Yeah. But the act that you well, which act started the Civil War? That's what happened. The act is an act of Parliament and an act of Congress. I That's what I thought I you were talking no, about. I can't believe that you. No, I'm sorry. It. I'm sorry. You misworded that question. No, I didn't. I don't word the question. I absolutely know why the war started. Of well, course, I knew why the war started in 1861. Fort Sumter. Absolutely, you gave me the wrong answer. Answer. Yeah, I did not. You, you, Zero out of two. You did not use the right words. You should have said what incident led to or started oh, the Civil War. Would you like to rephrase the questions before you answer them? Well, I, I just a stupid question. Right. You said what act? All right. It question was the abolition three. of slavery act I'm, passed I'm, in Congress I'm told, in 1860. I'm told I have to move on now. Then Ridiculous, we get so worked up about. stupid nonsense Qu question. Question number three. I don't know if you, how many ways you'd like me to interpret this one for you. How many men died in the Civil War? The original estimate was 660,000. That's been revised since to up to 750,000. Some historians say it could be as many as 900,000. The generally accepted figure is between 660 and 750,000. Incorrect. No, it's not. the worst soldier in this whole company. Now hit me! The generally accepted figure is 620. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, it is. Another rubbish question. No, it's not. It's not. That's a, 600... that's a rubbish. 620. Question no, number dribble, four. You're not dribble, doing very well here. Dribble. Question number four. Uh, well, you're, asking, you're not asking me the questions are, these properly. These are very straightforward No, questions. it's not. You're a thickhead because... Well, so now I'm not asking Question the right number way. two was, was worded so badly <laughs> I misunderstood it. Question number four. All right, I'll try and read them slowly so that you can you're understand. You're not reading slowly. You have to read them in English. All right, it's one in English. At the start of the war, nine million people lived in the South. Right? Right. Do you understand that? Yes. At the beginning of the war, nine million people lived in the South. Yes. As it was known. Yes. How many of them were slaves? Uh, out of the nine million people lived in the South, 6.3 million of them were slaves. How many? 6.3 million. Incorrect. No, it's not. You're the worst soldier in this whole company. Now hit me! Four no, million of them were slaves. No, it's not. That's rubbish. It's That's nonsense. Rubbish. No, That's it's nonsense. not. That's nonsense. I don't know who's researched these questions, but they're, they're ridiculous. Well, uh, question number five. So far, you've got zero out of four. Abraham Lincoln was president during the Civil War. Yeah. What was his occupation before he entered politics? Abraham Lincoln? Yeah. Before he entered politics? Yes. What's the relevance of that? that doesn't, that's not relevant to the Civil War at all. Well, it's part of the Civil War quiz. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, well, it's he not. was president during the Civil War. He, was, he became president in 1860. Hmm. The war started in 1861. Yeah. And before 1860... So what did he do that before? Before he was, po he was in politics, what did he do? Well, he was a farmer. But incorrect. No, no, it's not incorrect. It's not It's not right. No, it's not. It's not. It's right. It's not right. Well, what do you think it is? It's not what I think it is. It's yeah. what it was here. You can have either... You're the worst heard... soldier in this whole company. Now hit me! He, he was a shopkeeper yeah. and a lawyer. Yeah, and he was also a farmer. No, he he lived on a farm. No, he was not lived a on farmer. a farm in Maryland. No, incorrect. No, I know. Question no, number six. This is rubbish, yeah. Who was appointed president of the southern states? Uh, that would have been Jefferson. 
that's one name. Well, that was his surname, Jefferson. President Jefferson. Are you going with that? Yeah. Incorrect. No. You're the worst soldier in this whole company. Now hit me! His name was former US Senator Jefferson Davis. Yeah, that's right. He's Jefferson known as, was not his surname. He was known as President Jefferson. No, he wasn't. He was. Well, why was uh, Lincoln not known as President Abraham? Well, I don't know, but in the, in the southern states, that's what they called him. No, President Jefferson. Question number seven. No, that, no, that was right. Yeah, no, go on. Where was, the, where was the last battle of the Civil War fought? The last battle of the Civil War was fought in 1865. It was Tomax. <laughs> You're all laughing, huh? <laughs> Incorrect. No, it's not. You're the worst soldier well, in this whole not, company. What now do you think it is? It's not what I think it is. It's what it was. It's what? Palmito Ranch, Texas, May 13th, 1865. No, that's wrong. It's that's not wrong. wrong. That wasn't a battle. That was a skirmish. No, right, OK. It was a skirmish, you seriously. You haven't done any research on this at all, have you? you? I have. You have a look at the last battle. Um, according to well, historians, can... it was Apatomax. Apatomax. I, I know it was, yeah. It uh, was not the last battle. It that was. was. That was in April. This yep. was in May. I know, and 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 Appomattox was a battle in April, and the one you're talking about on a ranch, mm. it was just on a farm as a skirmish. It wasn't a battle. Well, I've I, I've got no, I've got I don't the, accept uh, it. I've got that. No, as, this as is me. I don't know who's drawn up these questions. I suspect it's you, but they're all it's rubbish questions. Question number Complete eight. Not a rubbish. You're going to like this one. How many words was the Gettysburg Address? The Gettysburg Address lasted two minutes and forty seconds, and it was no more than. It was no more than 720 words. Incorrect. No, You're the worst not. soldier in this no, whole not. company. Now hit me! It was 269 words. Yeah, that's right. But, Very short. Sure. Yeah, but it was a, there was a prelim and, and, a, <laughs> and a postscript to it. <laughs> really? Yes. All oh, right. Yes. What does the prelim say? That he was about to deliver the Gettysburg Address. That's not really words, is it? No, no, no. I wouldn't no, get no. it from 269 up no, to 700. No, 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 it would. It would. It would. <laughs> what, well, if you had the bit on at the end, that was the Gettysburg Address from President Lincoln. No, Another no, no, words. no, no. He explained at the end why he gave the address. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've right. got no... Ch- you've got a possibility of getting two out of ten no, here. No, it's rubbish. Question this is number rubbish. nine. Yeah. Who was known as the Angel of the Battlefields and later went on to form the American Red Cross? Well, it wasn't Florence Nightingale, right? I can't, I can't help you. No, no. Or was it Florence Nightingale? No, let me think. No, she was the Lady of the Lamp, wasn't she? The Lady of the Lamp. That was in 1863 as Different well. Different war as well. Uh, who's this uh, mysterious person? Um, uh, known as Angel of the Battlefields. Angel of the Battlefields. Yeah. Uh, formed the Red Cross. That was probably... Probably... I reckon that was probably... I knew who that was. That was Mrs. Lincoln. <laughs> You're the worst soldier in this whole company. Now hit me! Who are you laughing at? So it wasn't Mrs. Jefferson. No, it wasn't Mrs. Jefferson, you idiot. No, I got that right. It's yeah. Clara Barton. Clara Barton. Yeah. Yeah. This is spectacularly bad, even for you. Yeah, rubbish. Now you've got a chance of making one out of ten. Mm. Question number ten. Yeah. And I'll accept in uh, old money, yeah. i.e. the amount of money it cost them in re- in reality then. Yeah. Or in mar- money, in today's money, right? Right. Uh, what was the estimated cost of the war? To who? To America. What, to the Union side, to the Confederates? All told. All in. Well, that's impossible to evaluate. No, it isn't. Yes, it is. It's been evaluated. In, are we talking about in terms of military hardware that was bought? The cost of the war. I mean, people talk about the cost of the Second World War, don't they? No. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. Of course they do. You can't cost a war. Yes, you can. Right, so you're people asking me... about how much it costs to go into Iraq. Right, OK. What was the estimated cost of the war? The estimated cost of the... Then you have to tell me whether you're giving me it in today's money right. uh, or in money in those days. The cost of the war in money in those days, yeah. right, was $500 million. Incorrect. No, it's not. You're the worst soldier in this whole company. Now hit me! What? $6.19 billion in those days. Oh, no, that's in these days. No, no, in that's these days. That's in these days, days, which is the equivalent no, figure to the one I gave you. No, in these days, it's the equivalent figure to $146 billion. No, that's yes, impossible. It it's not impossible. Impossible. So I'm afraid to say, yeah. um, uh, unaccustomed as I am to announcing this, yes. uh, zero out of ten. Well, that's rubbish. <laughs> no, no, you couldn't even ask them. You, you couldn't even zero. ask them in English. Nothing. You asked me the Silch. third... 
The, thir- the, second, the second question was what act Bugger led all. to the Civil War. <laughs> so, of course, I said it was the act in Congress well, of abolishing mis- slavery. Well, you misinterpreted it. No, no, you, mis- you, you act- absolutely well, misdirected even if you'd managed- right. the whole question. Well, even if you managed to get that one right, yeah. you got one out of ten. No, I didn't, because I got President Jefferson as well. And the act of slavery was nowhere near the beginning it of the was. war anyway. It was. It was at the end of the war. It wasn't, you idiot. Why, yeah, do, you think that, why do you think the southern states are not having it? The Confederates, well, the they reason, said... No, but the reason there was a war was because of slavery. Way, and by the, the way... The reason there was a war was because of slavery, I right? know more about the Civil War than most people because, actually, abolition of slavery yeah. wasn't the issue that started the Civil War. Really? The issue that started the Civil War was. was... No, Abraham Lincoln yeah. said, look, unless we expand the well, economy... President to, Abraham. Uh, eh? President yeah. Abraham. Unless we expand the economy to bring <laughs> in the one-third of this country, yeah. which, is, which is dominated by slavery... We can't expand Only the one economy. one-third of this country works, is that what you say? We can't expand the economy. You can't have one-third of this country where wealth is kept in the hands of 0.1% of the population yeah. and nobody else, mm. i.e. the six million slaves, have got any spending power. Mm. So we've got to release them from slavery and well, make them consumers. Four, four million slaves. Make them consumers. It was four there were million. six million. There were six million. Those no, figures are all wrong. That was trash. I don't know where you got your information <laughs> from. Uh, these so-called individual invigilators are all bums. Nothing. And I refuse to recognise that as a quiz. That was horrendously no, bad. No, it wasn't. Even for you. No, it the wasn't. worst performance ever no. on the American Civil War. I don't accept Not it. out of ten. No. This is Talk Sport. The two mics simulcast across the UK on Talk Sport and Talk Radio. Where is my We are the two mics, and of course, uh, there will be a podcast coming out a little bit and later on. Uh, lots and lots of tweets have come Why in. Why didn't you ask me about, for instance, um, yeah, you always ask I, I don't put the questions You together. always ask me a film question, so I know everything about Gone with the Wind. Really? Clark Gable. Yeah. Vivian Lee. Yeah. Uh, Who else? Olivia de Havilland. Yeah. Uh, from a book written you've, by Margaret you've Mitchell. You've actually studied Gone from, with the Wind, from, you? from a book written by <laughs> Margaret Mitchell. Sold nine million copies right. alone yeah. in America uh, within 12 months of being published. Yeah. Why didn't you ask me anything about that? Well, because obviously you were anticipating uh, the fact that some gerrymandering was going to be why, going on. Why didn't and you? And we'd ask you about the uh, the Gone with the Wind film. Why didn't you ask me about Uly- Ulysses S. Grant? Yeah. About General E. Lee, yeah. which I knew, you know, I knew everything about. I yeah. knew everything about, right? Yeah. The Fort Sumter question was completely misconstrued to well, me. Well, no, you misconstrued I knew it I even yourself. know the name of the ship that fired the opening shots. Oh, yeah? Yeah. What was it called? It was called the Dardanelle. All oh, right. Yeah. OK. Right? Well, I'm sorry. I mean, I, mean, I knew I, all this. I, I knew re- all this. I cannot be responsible for you misinterpreting the How many men died at the Battle of Gettysburg? I didn't ask you that. 20,000? Yeah. I mean, why didn't you ask me any no, these questions? No, it was 51,000 uh, Battle it, of Gettysburg. It depends on which side you're talking no, about. No, no, it was 51,000 altogether. Why, why didn't you ask me any of these questions? You well, say, I, I knew all the answers to I, those. I do not you set the questions. Stupid, obtuse questions I've ever come across in my life. I think they were. Very, I said at the top they're very scholastic questions, scholastic. and I think they are. You don't know the meaning of scholastic. You're not a scholar. Mm. You're a thickhead. Well, how about this from Becky? Uh, with civil war nearly breaking out the studio, Porky shouting and ranting, getting easy questions wrong. Zero out of ten. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not accepting it. Uh, here's one from uh, DJ Brizey. I uh, can't believe how much whinging Porky's doing on the quiz. A shocking display. It needs to get more journals delivered. Uh, Hashtag thicko. Excuse me. I studied everything that was relevant about the Civil War and then was asked a load of ridiculous questions which had no relevance whatsoever to the Civil War, OK? Uh, Chris says Jefferson Davis is correct and he's also uh, in you. the United States. He says... The, no, but you yeah. got it wrong. You said his Preston name was Jefferson. Jefferson. He's not known as Jefferson. Yeah, well, he was. He you was. said that was his surname. Uh, Chris also says the war between the states absolutely is used here. It was the appellation typically used by Southerners. No, no, yeah, it was. No, Ian not, says not, not taxi, it. taxi for the bad loser. No, 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 no. Kevin agrees with you. Slightly misleading wording on question two. Thank you. Mild gerrymandering. No, yeah. any, an act can be any number of things. I did not say which act of government. Uh, I did not say no. which act of Congress. I said which act. No, in the English language, an act refers either to a part of a theatrical no, it's production, it's something that's done, or it refers to something passed in Parliament. All right, and and you completely mis- that's not true. used the words in that question. Mm. Ridiculous. That's not true. Uh, Roy says, what a fool. Yeah. Lincoln issued the presidential order uh, of the emancipation.
Nation proclamation. It was not an act of Congress. I'm sorry, but it became so an act of Congress. Anyway. No, it didn't. Mm. You know, James I, says, I mean, you peaked too soon in tonight's show and have now lost the plot completely. No. Useless performance in the Porky Quiz. You know, why didn't you ask me, oh, you know, uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln was the famous president of the United States who started, who, who, who at the start of the Civil War, who was the president at the end of the Civil War? Well, I can't ask... Andrew I, I, Johnson. I can't tell you why. Because Lincoln got shot at the Ford Theatre I can't by tell John you. Booth. Yeah, John Wilkes Booth. John actually. Wilkes Booth. I, I, I mean, I, I knew be... all this stuff. Yeah, well, why I, didn't you ask me about it? I can't be responsible for the questions. All Why didn't you I ask do, me about it? Because they're not in the questions. I get given the questions, I read the questions out, I tell you whether you're right Which or wrong. Which building in Washington, D.C. Mm. had to be postponed for four years? The building because, was postponed? Be, uh, postponed the building of the building for four years uh, because of the cost of the Civil War. I don't know. Capital. Really? The Capitol Hill right. building. Really? They had to postpone the building. Capitol building? The Capitol building, not that's Capitol what I mean. Hill building. That's what I said. Right. That's what I said. I knew all these things. You How didn't ask me about them. Well, I'm sorry. D says this. Porky ranting at the quiz master demanding to know why he asked questions he didn't know the answer to. Yeah. It is a quiz, not a chat, he says. Yeah. Well, you know, it's it's a very, very misaligned quiz. Uh, Basil says, sorry, Porky, when it comes to knowledge of the American Civil mm. War, you are a numbskull. Rubbish. Uh, Rubbish. And here's one from Kev. Like his football team, awful performance, then tries to put Roberto Martin... Martinez type spin on it. Why didn't you ask me plank. about the fact that you know what what military invention mm. was first used in the American Civil War? Uh, what was it? Submarines. 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 Really? Why didn't you ask me about that? I, I, I even knew the name of the first submarine. And what was that? Dordanelle. That what same as the ship that attacked? Well, the, they came uh, from the same class of ship. Subter. They came from the same. <laughs> They came from the same class of shit. a load of old Biloxi. No, 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 no. Uh, Melvin no. says, oh my, zero out of ten, well mm. done, Porky, mm. absolute plank. Uh, mm. I have to agree about question two, badly worded. Exactly, and that, that well, shook see, me. I don't agree. That shook me for the rest of the quiz then. Everybody knows that the second question was very badly worded and, and that just rocked my confidence yeah. for the rest of the quiz. Matt I couldn't says, think straight after in, that. In quotes. It was such an act of injustice, <laughs> it, it uh, knocked me off uh, kilter. It knocked you off kilter. I know more about the war than most people, says mm. Mike Parry. Yeah. Zero out of ten. But I've just proved Hilarious. with a load of facts I know more about the war. You just didn't ask me about it. You just called the submarine and the ship the yeah. same name. They were from the same uh, squadron. Same squadron. Yeah, they were. Seriously. Same squadron of seriously, ships. Seriously, seriously, they were well, both the same. Uh, well, name. well, I'll tell you what. Now that you're uh, mm. uh, suitably riled up, you mm. can then decide if you wish to choose a, a, a subject for next week. Well, I'm not doing that now. Why not? No, I'm going to have some time to uh, be pensive about it. I love the idea that you were researching Gone with the Wind, though. Yeah. Because I mean, if I had put any questions in about uh, the mm. film business, mm. then you would have complained. But you always do. So I thought, well, you know. The cheating I, told you many scumbag times. is going to uh, I've told is going you to try. Many times. I don't put the questions catch together. Me out. I just read the questions out. Yeah. And for whatever reason, this yeah. week there were no questions about Gone with the Wind. Mm. You can have a quiz on Gone with the Wind if you want. No, I don't want a quiz or, on, you know, uh, on, on Gone with the Wind. Or, or undersea vessels of the American Civil War. I think it's quite pathetic. Now, have you seen uh, our favourite newspaper today? They've got another cheery story on the front, yeah. uh, which is about a death of a child, mm. which is not very nice. But on the back, uh, listography... No, it's not about the death of a child, is it? Yeah, it is. No, it's not. It's about the death of a woman who saved a child. Oh, OK, something like that. But it's about a death anyway. So, oh, see, see, you can't even get those facts right. You know, you're supposed to be a newspaper journalist of the past, a newspaper editor. Well, I didn't want to go into the story. A young mum sacrificed her own life to save her baby daughter. I didn't want to get into the story. That is not about the death of a baby. Yeah, yeah, all right. I mean, considering you've just admitted to perjury in front of a national no, inquiry into the riots of 1981... No, I haven't. I'd keep your trap shut if I were you. Uh, the, uh, how about this from personal listography? No, I've just seen List it. List three hairstyles or colours you have had. That would be ridiculous. Well, you could that? fill that one out. No, I couldn't. Yeah, you have. Oh, no, you've had, you had red... You had your hair coloured red, haven't you? No, my I hair did. was naturally auburn red. No, I'm talking about when you were in your... Um, uh, <laughs> your hilariously named television venture. My TV phase. Yeah, your TV about. phase. TV when you, phase. When you, when, you, when you change the colour of your beard and your hair. Well, I was asked to change it by um, the people... Somebody who was colour blind. No, 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 no. Well, I'm not so, getting into that. Not well, so, into so now it's white, right? Yeah. You changed it into that kind of weird, bizarre red colour. And before that, it was, it was just a regular auburn, wasn't mm. it? No, it wasn't. Uh, See, my, my hair's always been the same colour. Sorry? My hair's always been the same colour. Yeah, and, that's, and do you know why it's always been the same colour? Because you, it hasn't turned white. No. Um, And it hasn't fallen out. No, no, it's not. It's because, actually, you have never been active enough to get the oils and the juices in your scalp working to the point where they change the colour of your hair. I'm plenty plenty active when I want to be. I don't worry about that. I don't think you are. So so you're saying Mm. that because you've lost some of your hair... 
It's because of your activity. Nothing it, to do with the follicle it's, it's, scenario. It's, the reason I, I haven't lost much of my hair, I've lost a bit of my hair. All people do in my hair. Lost but, all of it. But the reason it, you will see the most successful people in the world uh, have hair that goes grey. And the reason for that is we uh, generate so much adrenaline. Mm. There is so much drive within our, our physical bodies. Right. It changes your hair. Yours has never changed uh-huh. because, actually, you've never moved out of second gear in your life. Uh-huh. In your life, you've never moved out of second gear. You've always settled. <laughs> well, I haven't had to. You always settled for second best. I always, had to. always had to compromise. I mean, if you're running a, uh, running along next to me and your little legs are going faster than mine, doesn't no. mean you're actually no, achieving no. more. No, no, you're not actually getting any further along. Your problem in the whole of your life is that you are bone idle, and you've always fought bone idleness just to do the very bare minimum. That's you. <laughs> That's, That's you. the trouble, isn't it? That's why you well, resent me so much. Well, I don't resent you at all. Because I've had so much success by not having to try very hard. I don't resent you. Whereas you've had to try really hard at doing everything I, that you've ever done. How could I possibly... Not terribly successfully. How could I possibly resent a bum like you? The day I turn into anything like you, do you know what I'd do? I don't know. What I'd walk into the sea. Would you? Yeah, I would, yeah. 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 Well, okay. what, how, at which particular yeah. sea would you walk into? Uh, well, it would be the nearest sea. In my case, um, because I can see it from the balcony of my penthouse mm. flat, yeah. it happens what to be... What floor is your penthouse it, flat it, it happens to be the Solent. What, what fl- that's not the sea, though, is it? Of course it is. The Solent's the sea. The it's, Solent is the English Channel. It's not called the Solent Sea, though, is it? It's called the Solent. It's not like the Bering, not like the Bering Sea. Well, believe me, there's a lot of sea in the Solent. No, I know the Solent... Enough for a US aircraft carrier to park the there Solent, occasionally, the you know Solent what I mean? The Solent is indeed part of the sea, yes, but yes. it is not the Solent I've Sea. I've just told you, it's the English Channel. Yeah, the English Channel is the sea. Yeah, yeah. And, and it's separated from the rest of the English Channel by the Isle of Wight, actually. But the Solent, generally speaking, is, not a, is a body of water, but you wouldn't call it the sea. Of course, you, well, what would you call it then? I don't know what you would call it. Call it a it's, puddle. It's, well, no, it's just not the sea, is it? The lake. If you were to say to me, I would go into the English Channel, then that's fair. Yeah. But not, I would go into the Solent. Of course you would. No, I don't think so. Of course you would. People, I mean, people often go, you know, windsurfing in the Solent, on mm. the Solent. Yeah. Where do you think the on ships... On the Solent. Where do you think the ships that pull into Southampton all the time, these huge cruise lines we've mm. talked about, which route do you think they take in? But it's not the sea, They though. take it in through the Solent, yeah. you idiot. But I think it's a strait. I don't uh, think it's... Honestly. Uh, uh, it separates the Isle of Wight from uh, Portsmouth, basically, from the mainland of this country. That's, that's, I've just told you that. I said the Isle of Wight gets in the way between that and the English Channel. Mm. You are a jerk of enormous proportions. Maybe we should have a quiz on the sea. Yeah, well, I know I, I know more about I the seven think, seas than most people. I can think of a couple of questions with sea in them. Mm, yeah. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> Sport, we are the two mics. There will be a podcast coming out a little bit later on, of course. Um, yep. You know what? We made a, quite a few uh, uh, clips on Clips of the Week last week. We Did didn't we? get out until earlier this week. So what I might do mm. uh, is put Clips of the Week out as a podcast um, over the next sort of, 48 hours as oh, well okay. from, from last week. Okay. Because that didn't go out until Tuesday of this week. All oh, right, OK. Well, will send that out and I'll mm. retweet it and then okay. everybody gets it. Becky says this. Great show tonight, guys. Mm. Somewhat madder than normal. Didn't really? Seem madder than madder? normal to me. Did Was you? it madder? Calm down, Porky, and avoid those trees on the drive home. I bet I had. You're absolutely right. Mm. Don't run into a trees. Yeah. You know, McDonald's got themselves into trouble in Tokyo. Did they? Because they told their staff to mm. bow to customers, right. as is the custom in Japan. Yeah. Except that, for some unknown reason, they got the wrong bow. And really? they, uh, yeah, they bowed Korean style, which Ooh. is an insult, oh instead of bowing Japanese style. And how style. is it different? Is it from the waist or something? Uh, apparently, um, you bow with your hands folded and elbows spread apart, right. but that's the Korean bow, not the Japanese hands, bow. So, sort of, oh, what, like that, you mean? Like, like sort of... Uh, no, no, like this, like this. Oh, I see, yeah. With your hands across your stomach. Oh, well, that's the Japanese or the Korean? Yeah, uh, that's the Korean, the hands ah, okay. across your stomach and the elbows out. Right. And that ins- that's insulting to Japanese people because, of course, Japan and Korea fought a war. Yeah, they did. So do. they don't have much, uh, you know, affection for each other. The Korean War. Yeah. They have distinctive styles of greeting one another. The Japanese generally keep their hands close to their sides yeah. when they bow. So this is the Japanese bow, Mike, see? Right, OK. A bit like if you're yes. an Irish dancer. I get that, I mean? yeah, I get see that. See what I mean? Yeah. So, so that's, the, that's the way you bow... Uh, Japanese style. What mm. they would, 
what these guys in McDonald's were doing is they're placing their hands over their stomach yeah. with their elbows out and bowing like that. Well, you think they would know if they were Terribly Japanese. Terribly insulting. Yeah, they? you would. Yeah, I'm not sure how they got that wrong. Mm. Maybe they imported a load of people who didn't know what they were doing. Yeah, that wouldn't be bright, would yeah, it? They've, yeah. Apparently they've got a three times bigger than a normal Big Mac size Big Mac in Japan. Have they? Which they sell, yeah. Well, Japanese people are smaller than Western yeah. people normally speaking. You think mm. them smaller Big Macs, not bigger ones. You would think so, yeah. It's been a bit of an effort to eat one of them, I'm I mean, telling you, in get, Tokyo. We'll have to get somebody out in Japan to talk about that. This is Talk Sport. <laughs> we are the two mics. Look at the light! Don't forget to follow the two mics at the two mics on Twitter and on YouTube. Just look for Two Mics TV. And whilst I was talking to the woman saying, sorry, I had to smash your door down, but it smelled gas. He, he literally went into the parlour and he took the picture of the bloke off the top of the piano, put it in his pocket and ran off. And that's how we got the picture on the front page of the Evening Chronicle. Terrible. I'm like a vigilante, me, against bums. If you love the Two Mics podcast, you'll love the live show. Weekday overnights from 1am on DAB Digital Radio and 1089 and 1053 AM and via the TalkSport app. TalkSport, your Premier League station with exclusive commentaries every weekend. What an absolute corker. TalkSport. So I kidnapped him, actually. Right. 